This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. This episode is brought to you by the new 2040 corporate program that encourages your business to make good environmental decisions. You bloody hope they would, wouldn't you? Yeah, you bloody hope they would, Mason. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies, where we talk comics, where we talk TV shows, where we have special upcoming guests. Oh, my goodness. That's right. So that's going to be later in the show. This well, week, we've got a variety of topics, don't we, Mason? Yes. And we're going to go through it. We're going to talk Sean Connery. We're going to talk Fantastic Beast News, I guess. Uh, we're going to be talking about, uh, what else we got? Some video game stuff about, you know, that terrible Marvel video game that just came out. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I vaguely uh, remember that. <laughs> some Star Wars newses. Things are pushed back. And then, of course, special guests where we're talking about sad movies that make us sad, but and also comic book movies specifically. And then it just pivots to Batman, and it's if just I recall. Whatever. Then it just goes to yeah. Batman. We yeah. recorded it early. We recorded it earlier in the week. But it didn't record, so we've got them back in studio. We're just going to do it all again. Hey, guys. Welcome back. But shush. Sh- shush. And sh- sh- just shush. Stop flapping your gums, you idiots. If you haven't, check out uh, Auntie Donna's new show on Netflix. If you're listening to this, it's probably almost out or already out. It's coming out on the 11th, which is Wednesday. But it might be at like a midnight. Oh, is it? Okay, I was going to say, but it might be a midnight release, I think. Nice. Uh, it's fine. Yeah, you, it'll be you'll out figure it out. While. I've set seen the it, reminder. So. <laughs> set, the, set the reminder. Have you? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I have. Oh. Brendan sent me a copy. Nice. It was great. Uh, but anyway, well, uh, it's really great. It's really funny. I'll talk about it more of what we're reading. Nice. And we'll talk about it when we talk to the boys again. Anyway, Mason. <laughs> Through time, yes. Yeah. So we recorded a little bit early. Oh, time codes if you want to jump around. Time. Uh, last week we recorded a little bit early. Mm-hmm. And as you were driving home, we got, we got the news that Sean Connery had passed away. Actually, I was in the car outside your house. Oh, really? I was checking my phone mm. because I'm saying goodbye to my phone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I'm like, oh, I won't be seeing you for 30 minutes, phone. <laughs> my best bud, I'll put you away and then I'll <laughs> – we're, we're going to be apart for the longest we are at any time. <laughs> Exactly. During the week, oh, I'm so sorry I'm to put, hear that. put you away for a minute, and yeah, then yeah. and I was checking it, and I'm like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Should I go back and re- record something? I was already in bed. <laughs> it was already <laughs> over. Me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Had a little kip on the side of the road. Yeah. So look, Sean Connery, age ninety, yep. which is a great innings. Obviously, mm-hmm. most famously known for James Bond, but also yes. Alex G and movies in between. That's right. One or two in between. One there, or two yeah. in between. Yeah. yeah. And uh, look, have you seen Outland? I haven't seen Outland. It's like um, it's like a western, but in space. Is that where he's on the moon? Yeah, he's a, he's like a cop on the moon. Yeah. It's like I think um, I have seen that or half of it. It's like high noon. It's yeah. like he's um, High Moon. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. First poster of the week, straight uh, out of the gate. There is. But yeah, he's like uh he's like um I think it's high noon. There's a there's a western where like um there's a there's a man and a there's a husband and wife and the the wife's like, We've got to get out of this town on the last train. And and he's like, no, but I got to deal with these bad guys first. So if I meet you on the last train, I'll meet you there. But if okay. if you don't meet me there, it's I've been killed by the bad guys. And it's the same thing, except it's a space shuttle. Oh, very good. Yeah, it's from anyway. the early eighties, right? Yeah, yeah. I I just looked. I was like, has he ever been in a, in a western? He was. He was in Shalok Shalako from uh, nineteen sixty eight. No idea. I no idea what that is. Okay. And look. I feel like we have we have to at least acknowledge the fact that he did have uh, endorse hitting women multiple times. He really did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like so. and, and again we. Have spent significant amount of time this week and just an emergency Google just moments yeah. before the podcast starting. Did he change his did tune? Did he change on this? his tune? Did he make any donations to like domestic violence charities? Did he did yeah. he do anything to to recant any of that? Not really. The, the only thing we could find was in two thousand six, he apparently told friends that any abuse against women was is never acceptable or something. Yeah, so, so cl- yeah. friends close to the star said that's that what he they said. said that he said. So right. yeah, there you, so look, and that's you know you can enjoy whatever you want of him because yeah, I, I'm, he has done good work over the years. Obviously. And again, like any, he's I, great in Indiana Jones. It might be my favorite role of his. Yeah, and I mean, if we if we didn't have that, we wouldn't have him in the the uh, Lucas Arts point and click Indiana Jones adventure game. Does he actually voice that? No. Oh, Mason, why'd you make Like this? all LucasArts games of that era, he's voiced by some coloured text that appears above <laughs> oh, his yeah, head in the colour that represents him, probably grey because he's old. Because he's, uh, he's old. And, uh, Harrison Ford, I know, had some fun story about him. There was I can't remember what the writer's name was, but there was a great Twitter thread. The last movie he was going to do was a Brett Ratner movie, and he was very involved in the process. And eventually he was like, Brett Ratner sucks and I'm not doing this. Oh, because he was very involved with the writers. Yeah. I yeah, that's, yeah. I, know, I, I wish I had the names in front of me. Anyway, I'll, I'm here for anybody throwing shade at Brett Ratner. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. It, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, you know, if you love the movies in, if you love the Bond movies, you know, a lot of people work together to make all that stuff happen. Exactly, So you, yeah. you don't, don't be like, oh, well, 
I can't watch these anymore. Yeah. But just be aware. You can because some of them are very boring. You could say that. Oh, you could certainly say that, yeah. You could be like, <laughs> if you're going to take a stand on anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, so look, a complicated man, no doubt. And then, of course, there's that story about how Michael Caine once held his, held his coat while he, beat, while he beat up six men in a bar or something. Huh. I don't know if you've heard that story. Zardos. Oh, yeah, sure. The picture of Zardos. A picture of, imagine a man <laughs> dressed as, as, as Zardos with, with big, a, big red big underpants with a, suspenders holding them up. And a plat. Yeah, yeah, he had a lot going on. Yeah. 90, though. There you go. Good innings. Yep. Uh, so in other news... Johnny Depp has exited Fantastic Beast 3, which is apparently filming at the moment. Uh-huh. So this is at the end of a, the, a defamation trial in London's High Court where the judge found that the newspaper's claims that were that said that Johnny Depp was a wife beater were substantially true. Yeah. Now, he, of course, is denying all these allegations, and we do know, of course, that Amber Heard was also terrible. It's, this They're is, both terrible. It's a fucking – it's a horrible situation. Yeah. Uh, we, we we decided not to report on this, but now this relates directly to like a movie and its casting. So I feel like it would be weird if we said nothing and we'd we definitely are, get messages. We are um, valid journalists. That's right. So we're we valid must, journalists. We must, you know. So it says uh, like they both, Warner Brothers and him released a statement and it was very evident that he, even though he stepped down, they asked him to step down. Like that was the that that was what the statement right, said. Right. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, and he also talks about how his re- resolve remains strong, and he intends to prove the allegations against him are false, and his life and career won't be defined by this moment. So look again, this is ongoing, and we don't have all the information. Sure, don't. We're not in that courtroom. Yeah. We're not. Yeah. So so this, I think, the next case is going to be in the U.S. So you know, this was a separate case to the other oh case God, that's going yeah. on. Uh-huh. So. You know, we can't wait to report back on that. God, we, we get... love it. We love talking about this stuff. It's so good. Yeah, so We're good and fun. So, what does that mean for Fantastic Beasts? Who gives a shit? Not... <laughs> that, that that franchise is going off the rails. Nobody <laughs> likes any of it anymore. People are people are getting again. People are people are like, oh, you can you know what? You can still enjoy your Harry Potter. You books. still exactly enjoy yeah. all the stuff. It's it's fine because there's a lot in Harry Potter about inclusiveness, isn't there? It and sure about is. you know. It, it, and it's supporting each other and being yep. your best and mm-hmm. everybody's everybody's somebody. Yep. Yeah. And they could bring Colin Farrell back. And they can exactly they and they could bring be, him back. Or anybody. Anybody at all. <laughs> anybody in the world. Also, Voldemort's like not in every movie. So That's, just don't yep. have him in this one. It's mm. fine. Do you mean Grindelwald? Whatever. No, I meant Voldemort. Because <laughs> oh, okay. he's he's in he's not in like he's not really in one and two yeah, right. or three. And mm. then he shows up as like, and then he's properly cast. Oh, so you're saying for... Grindelwald doesn't have to be in the no, next couple No, he does. I mean, That's... he wasn't really in the first one. That's true. But, but he was. It was in college. <laughs> Look, I didn't mind that first one, but there's been uh, there's been a lot of sour Harry Potter grapes coming my way since, oh, yeah. including mm-hmm. that second movie. So mm, sure, whatever. But yeah. again, a lot of talented people work on these things, and that's how these things. <laughs> Ironically, go. that what you just did there was like. What happens in the last third of most of these movies, which is just a, a, somebody giving a huge inf- info dump, like <laughs> yeah, a rambling right. info dump, and everybody sits and stares at them while they do it. And go, what an interesting backstory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can't yeah. wait to tell my backstory when they stop talking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's do a, yep, let's do a, let's do a roundtable telling the backstory. Let's do it. Uh, also, uh, this comes via, this is some good news. This Ooh, is, this is the kind finally of, finally got yeah, This is the kind of news that makes me go, yeah, this feels good and right. Mm-hmm. So this is by the Video Game Chronicles, and this relates to the Marvel's Avengers game, which was oh. farted onto consoles and PC. So when you say good news, you pr- you're you probably going to say bad news for the, the publisher that of this game. That is exactly what I'm saying. But good news for people who want this game to go away. Yes. Uh, because it is a games as a service and ongoing and it's very repetitive, I put it down because... I said, you have two children. Well, no, I said why on this show, but I can't remember specifically right. why. But I definitely went... No, I don't want to play this anymore. Uh-huh. And then I stopped. Yeah, right. So, but uh, so the Tokyo-based Square Enix. So they were looking to make like their version of Destiny, and you know this ongoing thing. And it's yeah. like we're going to support this game for years. More and, missions and stories. Yeah, don't and even worry about how much content you can get. You're mm. going to love paying for content for years. <laughs> yep. So the Tokyo-based Square Enix reported a loss of uh, 6.5 billion yen and sold 60 percent of what Square had initially projected. Right. So the numbers mean. Uh, they haven't given official numbers, which is bad. Sure, right. But uh, I mean, they could lie. They definitely could lie, but it's estimated that they sold about three million copies, which is good. Like for Fall Guys, okay, <laughs> do you know sure, what I mean? Yeah. A game that didn't uh-huh. cost this. It's good for Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, the point and click adventure. <laughs> exactly. From the nineties, like three people probably worked on that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it netted a loss of sixty-three million dollars. Seems like a lot of money. It does, and it's mm. not gaining traction. People are not yeah. interested. And apparently, it's there. There are if you want to if you want to 
meet people online to do online gaming. Like it's yeah. hard to find them on servers. Yeah, it's hor- horribly it was built, buggy. They, the, yeah. the servers have been were, were built around like there's going to be so many players that you can just jump in at any point, but you just get on a server and you're like, oh, there's there's no yeah, one and here. often it would crash regardless. And I do also feel bad because. There's story elements of that that I think really work, and there yeah. are some design elements that I like. And again, it's one of those things where, if it, it's a all these corporate decisions ruin this. If like yeah. if this was a single player with some maybe some multiplayer elements where you just go through, because I felt like when it was more focused and when it was like when you're not just fighting robots in a in a big box. Yes, <laughs> uh, it was interesting, and the Kamala Khan story I thought was like an interesting perspective mm-hmm. on it. But yeah, no good and uh, good. And Miles Morales is out this week, so oh, great. Right. Apparently, it's really good. And it's now shorter. That's, that's a PS5 yeah. exclusive. No, it's right? coming to PS4 oh, as well. It's coming to PS4. So, yeah. So if I'm, I buy it on PS4 and then eventually I buy a PS5. I think it gives you an upgrade or something. <sighs> I think, yeah, mo- most of the games oh are, are backwards compatible, I believe. But maybe good. you want to be getting an Xbox, new Xbox. I don't. I still don't know which versions are which, and I feel I would. Make, one's not. I feel, one's, I, would make, I feel I would make a mistake, mm. and the surly uh, EB Games employee would just be like, <laughs> yeah, you should buy that one. You should buy <laughs> the Xbox One. And I'd be like, Okay, <laughs> wait a minute. So I've, I've, he's, take... <laughs> he's, he's, he's given me a brick that's been painted that weird light grey colour. <laughs> Doesn't do anything. No. Yeah, well, they they got all the uh, the Fallout guys stuff. Remember, they got all that stuff. They bought that company. That people. Like oh, they bought Bethesda. Bethesda. Yeah, Bethesda. yeah, they that's sure the did. Yeah, uh-huh. they got they're going to get in Doom and. Oh, that's true. Yeah, but stuff. you know what? I it's th- too early in a console generation for yeah. me to get anything. And also, yeah, no, and also I think. I've reached because I've I've spoken about you know I've I bought Doom and Doom Eternal in the past. Mm. I think I've reached my absolute limit of like how good I'm going to get at those games. Yeah, right. Because they released a new expansion pack mm. for Doom like a few weeks ago, and I didn't I haven't played it, but I just looked at the like the first five minutes of gaming, and I'm like, this is for people who absolutely breeze through the last two. <laughs> yeah. Like it's like I'm done, and I need a new challenge, and I'm like I'm never I will never yeah I will never be able to beat can't do it. Two cyber demon in a in a in a narrow corridor or whatever, and there's no escape. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to do that. Did you try the guns? That's one of the options oh my in God. the game. Yeah, you're Can probably trying. You're trying to point and click your way out of there. Was, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so I was not- trying to step on a loose board at the end of a dock to flip a, a fish over, and I catch the fish. And I use it to lure a troll. Xana's you know? got a key in it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> or a book with a code in it. Might have a book with a code. Yeah. yeah so there you go. Uh, exciting, is it not? Yeah, yeah. I'm excited for Miles Morales. That's yeah. Yeah. So you're gonna get it on PS4? Yes. And so again, it's short up, but apparently it's like just as compelling. And apparently also on the PS5, it looks amazing. Yeah, I bet. it's a great yeah. launch game. But mm. also, it's kind of a side cool, but also takes the game forward. Again, I haven't played it, so maybe right. it's not <laughs> yes. good. I, yeah. I don't know anything about it. I've seen a few minutes of, of gameplay yeah. footage, and I again, I. Uh, I saw the the thing you mentioned. I think last week, which is they gave him the, the into the Spider Verse suit and slowed his frame rate down, so he looks like the the movie version. That's fun. I watched that again yesterday because my son is a big fan. Mm-hmm. It's a fucking great movie, man. It's one of the best. Yeah. Somebody wrote in. I wish I had it in front of me, but they were like, "You said the worst comic book movie of 2018 was going to be that Sony one." I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, I, yeah, I probably I don't remember saying that, but I probably said that." Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. But uh, who thought that was going to be good? Not me. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Yeah, but it's incredible. It's an incredible movie. Deadline are reporting that Boba Fett is getting a series, possibly uh, filming before the end of the month. There's lots of chat, I hope, happening over at Lucasfilm, but there might be some confusion between that and what's happening in The Mandalorian Season 3, which is gearing so this up would as be, well. So this would be a spin-off of The Mandalorian. Yes. This would be a, a, a backdoor pilot, if you will. A Joni Loves Charchi. Oh, yeah, it would be a Joni. How many seasons did Joni Loves Charchi get? I'm going to say one. Let me check, Mason. It's either going to be one or, like, seven. Yeah, <laughs> you know, in that black hole that was the seventies slash eighties. I don't totally. know. Totally, uh, it got so it aired for one say uh, eighty two to eighty three. So oh. there you go. Do you think James? It'll be. Do you think this Boba Fett spinoff is going to be more Journey Loves Chachi or more Mork and Mindy? Two seasons. Mm, good question. Isn't yeah. What's so? Does who who from Mork and Mindy appears in Happy Days? Mork. So it is Mork, and yeah. he's like, I'm an alien. Yep. It's after the shark, presumably. I don't know. I mean, it would have to be, right? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they're like, no, no, Fonzie jumping the shark was was too far, but Mork appearing in the diner was the pinnacle of, of television at the time. <laughs> oh, no doubt. Yeah. So The president commented on it. On, did on he really? This, no, I don't know. Uh, but it feels like he'd just weigh in. You yeah, know what I think I mean? so, yeah. Wait, which president, Mason? Sorry to get political. <sighs> it was probably... What year was it? The s- Nixon, wasn't it? 70s? No, no, so it, it would have been... Late um, 70s. Jimmy Carter? 
Yeah, maybe. Which is the one that owned the peanut farm? That's Jimmy Carter, wasn't it? Might have been it? Jimmy Carter. Yeah, but he gave away his peanut farm. He guy's still building houses, isn't he? I know, right? Yeah, it's yeah. madness. It's like a million years He's old. a million years old. Man, I've, I'd never help anybody. That's the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the only reason you'll never be president of the United States of America. Yeah, well, good. Uh, <laughs> seems like a nightmare. Uh, so, st- st- oh, no, what have we got here? Yeah, delays, but don't dismay, Mason. Oh, my goodness. We're a bit light segment. on news, but don't worry, because we're, we're probably going to talk to the Auntie Donna boys for over an hour, probably. Probably. Uh, so well, Some of that it might be just outside the door, you know, on my phone. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, t- well, Disney Studios have removed Ryan Reynolds' lead Free Guy and Kenneth Branagh's Death of the Nile from 20th Century Fox's December release schedule. Oh. So I remember when the Free Guy trailer, they made a joke and they are like, coming soon, we think, yeah. oh, we hope. <laughs> and we were like, great jokes, um, everyone. <laughs> but then we remembered <laughs> Disney can't tell jokes. No. They're bad at jokes. No, so. they got some jokes. Give me an example of one joke. There. Sometimes in Ant-Man, someone will say something and they'll look to Paul Rudd and he'll pull a face. That's pretty good, actually. <laughs> He's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's one yeah. of the best. Do you think he has a like a? Do you think he has a clause in his contract that he he gets paid per? That number of faces that he does might be right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think also he'd have to be paid because he's got such a youthful face. Yeah, it costs like a, it takes a lot of physical toll on him to do it. That's how he stays youthful. He doesn't pull faces. He's got a face <laughs> insured for a million dollars. That's right. Like J Lo's butt. It's the J Lo's butt of faces. Yes, that's, that's correct. Yeah. Or the Michael Flatley's legs of faces. Mm-hmm, yep. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Great stuff. River dance. River dance. Yep. Jess Perkins, big fan. So, oh, I forgot to mention Star Wars news. I will probably talk about The Mandalorian, but yeah. I, I was on the Steel Wars chat this week on the Steel Wars cha- channel. Actually, it's still, I've recorded it today. It's out by now. It's out okay, by now. Sure, yeah, great. But a bunch of people got together and we talk about the latest episode of The Mandalorian. So, did you like it? Yeah, I did like it. But it wasn't my favourite, but if you want more thoughts on it, in that chat, we can, and you can you, you probably saw it. We'll talk more about thoughts it later. than that? Yeah. It's a lot. That, it's more thoughts. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah. excited for it. Okay, that's, that's right. really so good. So we mostly we talk a lot about how those eggs been eaten and, and the ethics <laughs> Behind that, which I think is important. Mm. Yeah, but uh, Big Monster Band killed this week as well. Oh, I haven't which, watched it yet. Oh, really? Yeah, but I'm, oh, we I, can't talk about it. I assume them. it's going. I assume that there's a Big Monster Band killed. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we'll talk about it another week then. Bigger than the crate dragon? No, not that big. Huh? Smaller than a crate dragon, but bigger than a small crate dragon. Huh? So somewhere in that. Uh, wow. Okay. Bandwidth. Sure. Great. Wow. Well. <laughs> so, what do you think about that though? Free guy, death in the Nile. COVID cases are up in the US. Aren't they? Uh, UK's going into lockdown. Yeah. Um, well, I guess cinemas are opening this week. Oh, it's true. They are. It's true. Yeah. We might be able to do tenants next week. <laughs> maybe. If I can get that one seat in the cinema, they're going to yeah. open up. Maybe we'll talk yeah. about tenant. Maybe. Fuck yeah. Can't wait. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see that seven out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody says it is. Seven out of ten, it, I think you meant oh, to say. Oh, nice. Uh, but speaking of, mm-hmm. 4K, Blu-ray, DVD and digital pre-release orders for Tenet will begin on November 10th. I don't know if you saw that, Mason. Oh, so the pre-orders. So not it's yes. not actually coming up. But, but we're allowed to pay for it. In a, in yeah, we're very much allowed to pay well, for good it. On, good on them for letting us pay for something we don't get Yeah, yet. that's what I'm saying. It's well within <laughs> your right to purchase this thing when it eventually comes out. Are you Terrific. excited for that? Yeah. So, yeah, they reckon uh, a base. It's good to know because oftentimes when they're like, coming soon on Blu-ray and DVD and digital, it's Tenet. And I'm like, are they going to let me pay for that? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Am I ever going to get to purchase that? But it's good to know just yeah. ahead of time they'll let me Pay for it. Uh, quick sidebar, if you don't yes. mind me just jumping, jumping Go this on. way. Yes. And I've got to move to another microphone. Okay. I'm just pantomiming. I'm he is really pantomiming. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but what if I really did it? What if I set up another microphone? It was a full, like, 40 minutes of me <laughs> testing levels and trying to figure out yeah. chords. Like, and then we, when we somehow, like, uh, we lost 20 minutes. <laughs> but then we're like, no, no, we're, we're committing to this joke. <laughs> we're doing it. Uh, so you probably saw this, but Amazon lost or involved in a court case where – there's a clause within their, their streaming services and their digital purchases where anything that they sell, you don't own. Yes. Which so it can be removed from the digital platform. and Which also uh-huh. I think any digital platform owner, that is the risk of like, if you purchase something yeah. digital, if that platform shuts down, like say example, for example, if Steam shuts down, yep. your games disappear. They don't send you all the discs. No, that's true, yes. <laughs> on floppy disks. They don't send you those three and a half inch <laughs> floppy disks. That's right. Yeah. So... Uh, I they always won't put it all on a jazz drive. No, for they you. won't, will no, they? they won't. What's a jazz drive be holding? I mean, jazz, one but gig? I'm talking about in quantum. How big one is gig it? Of jazz. How big is it? One yeah, gig of jazz. Jeez. Yep. Just one song? Yep, that's right. <laughs> I don't know how big a jazz drive was. Maybe like. Yeah, like but a, it had its own separate power source, didn't it? Was that one of those ones? 
I don't know. Because you know some of those. Let's you look it up. Yeah, let's look it um, up. Look, uh, what were we talking about? Lost Tenet, the thread. Like, uh, basically, yeah. you don't own anything. No, that's true. And it's, you know, yeah. and it's because a lot of stuff, even if you buy it on, you know, on um, Google Play or whatever, yeah. it, you don't get it and it downloads it to your TV or whatever. No. It's you, you, every time you want to, if you've bought it, it's in your library. And every time you want to watch it, it streams it from their yeah. server. So if Same the, with music. So, yeah, so if the server shuts comics. down or they lose the rights to the to distribute it again, it just goes away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They can do that with Kindles as well, I think. if you Even if you buy a book, they've done it in the past where yeah, they're right. like, for whatever reason, we're removing this book. And then the next time you switch your Kindle on, it just disappears. Like they take it off the Kindle. What if you don't connect to a Wi-Fi device? Good question. If they send a guy around to beat you up. A guy around to give it to you on disc. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There it is. Not a book. They're like, a they're like, take this disc, and you're like, what are you? And then they beat you up. <laughs> it's a distraction. But they don't delete it off your Kindle because they're like, that's actually clever work you've done there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You haven't connected it, but I am here to beat but you up. We're allowed to beat you up. We're allowed to beat you up. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So you were going to say, how big is a whatever the thing is? Jazz drive. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty big. How big? That's like that's like as big as like one of those external. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's a like, serious situ- situation. Yeah. yeah, early 2000s. These look very familiar. But that disc is like, so it'll be like a three hundred. It'll be like a three and a half inch. Oh, 95 to 2002, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Wow. Mm. What an era. What <laughs> if? Oh, my God. I, just don't the, miss, just I, the, I don't miss anything. Just the worst <laughs> era. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know I mean? I'd never go back. Do you know back. what I mean? I had that There's thought. nothing that I'm like, I mean, youth, sure. Sure, but whatever. It's gone. Joints <laughs> that don't creak, whatever. <laughs> The ability to roll over in bed without pulling a muscle, sure, whatever. But I mean, <laughs> other than that, just oh my god, you couldn't put anything. Ah, oh, there was. Ah, oh. yeah. Look, people don't know, James. Some people, people I think a lot of people know. People like b- back in the day, if you wanted to download an MP3, yeah. Sometimes what you had to do is you had to go onto like a weird shady server, yep. and they'd make you upload. This is pre Napster. Yeah, by they'd the way. make you upload a bunch of MP3s. Yeah. That they didn't have, yeah. so you could de- so that you were then allowed to up uh, download a. Would they check them before they send you the thing? Because you could just send oh, them, I don't know. You could send them hot action cop like oh, four times, but but rename hot action. Cop. Yeah, and you could say the hot right. action cop's new single. Yeah, or time. like it's it's one of the good Radiohead albums you could call it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the one you like because yeah, yeah. you know they've, they've got a variety of sounds. Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, but and then you'd maybe get something yeah. right. Yeah, because some 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 of these servers had a ratio. So if it was a ten to one ratio, it was 10, 10 songs, and you'd get one of your own. It's crazy. Just, what a nightmare. Yeah, it was. I don't think I ever did that. It was faster was... to just turn the radio on and wait for the song to play. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, all this or sucked. call in. I mean, besides obviously the LucasArts point and click adventure games. But the thing is, like the things that I miss and like, yes. I can get. Like oh, I yeah. like records, so yeah. I have them. That's right. So it's like. Again, I wish I was young, Mason. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't get me wrong, yeah, Mason. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, yeah, I think I've told you this before. But like every now and then, I'll catch myself in the mirror, and I'm like, "How did wear wool?" <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Jesus. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, Tenet. Why am I suddenly holding this jazz drum? <laughs> <laughs> maintaining my youth. Tenet's coming out. Oh, yeah, that's right. And we might do an episode on it. Even if it's out, like we don't even know if it's going to cinemas this week. Yeah. Keep checking the website. Village Village Cinemas, Australia's own Village Cinema. I got an email. Yeah, it got an email and it said it was on on the little thumbnail. Yeah. But again, who's what do we get? We get we get ten tickets to theater. What's going on? I don't know. I'm just looking again if my uh, local no, it's still not there. Because right now in Australia, for people who don't know, yeah. like if you want to go to the pub, yeah. you can't just walk into the pub. No, you have to like book in advance with a table of like six or eight. Exactly. And so. if one of you don't show up, they beat you up. They beat you up. They yeah. send that guy over. <laughs> that guy. He's real busy at the moment. Yeah, but uh, so it's. Yeah, also for those people going into lockdown, specifically yes. in the UK, I know there's again there's cases rising in the US. Honestly, it sucks. I'm really sorry. Yeah. Like it's um we did it for a long time and it just sucks. Yeah. <laughs> like it sure does, yeah. But it I mean it worked here and it sure made did, it yeah. work other places, hopefully. Yeah. If um people stick to masks and then we can and all watch tennis. We can all watch tennis together in a big yeah. cinema we call big cinema experience. Right? That's right. <laughs> big cinema experience. <laughs> yeah. That's how they're marketing it to us. That's it. So uh just just one more bit of news before we bring in the Auntie Donna boys. Bring Mason. the big guns. Bring them in. Uh, so Christopher Nolan was talking about the cinematic experience and how, what he believes uh, Tenet, Brock to Tenet, <laughs> what's it called? I'll find out this week. But uh, what, how, what he thinks it, it did for cinemas. He said, I'm okay. worried that the studios are drawing the wrong conclusion uh, from our release. I was going to do his accent, but what is it? Uh, that, that rather... Uh, no, <laughs> yeah. not quite. No deeper. Ooh. No. Oh, yeah. Celluloid, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Perfect. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's very Nolan, isn't it? Uh, that rather than looking, <laughs> That's his sequel to Love, actually. <laughs> but it's about it's not about love generally. It's about the love of the cinema experience. Of course it is, yeah. Uh, that rather than uh, looking at where the film has worked well and how uh, that can provide them with much-needed revenue, they're looking at where it hasn't lived up to the pre-COVID expectations and start using that as an excuse to make our exhibitors take all the losses from the pandemic instead of getting into the game of adapting or rebuilding our business, in other words. So, yeah, he's basically saying that cinemas are taking the hit for this thing not being as big as it would have been last year. Yeah, right, I right, guess, right. which is, yeah, seems accurate. But I, I, if you're not opening up, what do you what do? You, do? you know what I mean? And yeah, we, right. we had this discussion because there are businesses closing. Yeah, yeah. But if what do you, people aren't going, what do you do? That's true. You know? Again, government bailouts yeah, maybe. to small yeah. businesses yeah, yeah. That are, or individuals. There are some cinemas in Melbourne that are doing Uber Eats if you want to buy a choc top or like a popcorn. They'll Uber Eats oh, really? it to your house. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, so if you want some of that hot. I don't want one at home. I want to get one out. <laughs> yeah. I don't actually like them. I just get them. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, sure. I don't, want, of, I don't as, want this. Yeah, outside of context, you're like, hmm, this is a... It's a, weird. It's a weird it's cone, weird. <laughs> chocolate coated ice cream. Yep. Yeah, uh, exactly. Why would I order boysenberry? I don't understand. I always get boysenberry. I, I don't like... even know why I do it. <laughs> I think it's because I don't want something too salty for cinemas. You know what yeah, I mean? I understand, sure. You know what I mean? Because it's like there's three flavors. There's vanilla, there's very salty caramel, and there's boysenberry. Sometimes there's mint. Oh, yeah, they'll do a mint. That's true. That's yeah. right. Hey, Mason, is your business, the business of podcasting slash tram driving. Go on. Is your business or organisation ready to take climate action? I hope so. Or grow its commitment to climate action? I all additionally hope so, yes. Good, Mason, because the team behind the Australian uh, feature documentary 2040, which of course was part of the program which we raised money for last year for That's a seaweed, right. seaweed farm, if you remember, directed by Damon Gamo, has launched a corporate program designed to encourage businesses to lead on climate, embed more sustainable practices and environmentally friendly behaviours in the workplace, strengthen their commitment to carbon reduction and inspire climate action. My goodness. Action. So we're going to stop like burning all these styrofoam containers? Not this week, but we will. Okay, great. That's not great. by 2035. We I will, understand. We will sure, stop, sure. Yeah. <laughs> 2040 is a positive, empowering journey which explores what the future could look like by the year 2040 if we embrace the best solutions available to us now to improve the planet. There is a trailer which people should absolutely check out if they have not already. It is on YouTube and it's also on a number of streaming platforms. But the idea is that this program enables you to screen 2040 digitally or physically and provide a range of tools to empower the uh, your business to start or continue your climate action journey. And you can also tailor your engagement program from messages from 2040's director through special Q&A events, impact workshops, and unique opportunities to tell the story of your climate commitment. For bookings, because you can book this. You, you can make this change in wh- wh- literally wherever you are, well, businesses, big, small, in between, wherever you are on the structure of the corporate ladder. Well, let me put down this styrofoam container in this lighter and you can tell <laughs> me how I can do it, James. Uh, you can learn more at... What's your 2040.com slash corporate? And as said by the 2040 team, together we can stop Mason from burning styrofoam by the year 2040. <laughs> Good luck. No. Uh, <laughs> together we can make climate change everyone's business because it absolutely is. That's right. I don't know if you look around, but whatever you're looking at, that's on the planet. We're all, all, all on that's that planet. That's right, yeah. yeah. Mm. So you know, unless you're on the moon. In which case... Um, How'd you get on the moon? And get back to work. Stop listening to podcasts. Keep digging up those moon rocks <laughs> for your moon lords. <laughs> I'm with the show. But do it. It's, in, it's bloody yeah, planets. Look at all the stuff out here. It's bloody, mm. bloody uh, you know, may, yeah. may, not, may not be here much longer if we don't bloody get onto it. Exactly. Now, Mason, it's a very exciting time for streaming of Netflix comedies, specifically Auntie Donna, because they have a new streaming comedy right now on Netflix. No, on the 11th which is the day after this comes out. Can you be any more which, specific? Which Can people, you be more specific? I'm not, I, really, I'm, I'm not really picking up what you're putting down. They're going to really love it. Huh. And I thought what better way to let them know that they're really going to love it by getting two of the six members of Auntie Donna in yes. here to talk about some 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 stuff. So one third of Auntie Donna. Oh, oh <laughs> sorry. The, the tone's been lowered already. Thank you. I did a fart. <laughs> <laughs> We've got, we got Mark and Broden from Auntie Donna here. Thank you so much. Red yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for coming in. comic book movie news. news. Shoot it. Up your your butt butt hole. Should we change the theme song, do you think? Oh, no, I, w- I would be upset if it changed now. Okay, yeah, I feel like a lot of people feel that way. Maybe a redo of it, like a remix version. Okay, sure, like yeah. Record squeal. <laughs> yeah. Check it. And then it does like, <laughs> you guys do a rap. I think that'd Have be like good. a real distorted what a- synth underneath. Yeah, right, okay. Stuff. What yeah. about like a poignant one with like a Christian choir and they all yeah, sing no. it together? <laughs> that'd be, that'd be beautiful right. as well. Maybe, yeah, like post-election we could be all sad. We could do a Saturday Night Live style. <laughs> beautiful <laughs> stuff. <laughs> 
Mason, you had a really... Oh, by the way, before we get into it, you've got a show a really on Netflix. Was. Yeah. It's airing on the 11th. This lot- really is the best place for news. It, yeah. <laughs> absolutely it is. <laughs> so this is super exciting. We just recorded another thing about how you talked about how the how Netflix deal happens, which which we'll go up later in the week. But tell us a little bit about your show. That is, this, that's, this is what you do, right? You've got a promo thing. Is that I, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know, I guess. <laughs> uh, so we haven't have been doing this every day for the last two fucking weeks. Oh, cool. um, <laughs> that's, that's lucky then, isn't it? Mark's, Mark's been down at the promo mines. He's wearing a boiler suit, I should say, for the listeners. No, so. that's just for fashion. Oh, my goodness. It's um, working for you. Uh, thank you so much. It's um, called Auntie Donna's Big Old House of Fun. I almost mm-hmm. said the D there is no D. It's all with a comma. Oh, yeah. Oh. And, uh, yeah, Netflix, it's a sketch narrative show that we made in America. And barely it's... narrative. Yeah, mm, barely okay. narrative. Light narrative. Narrative light. There's some similar characters. It's a narrative light sketch. Narrative okay, zero. You. Narrative zero. <laughs> gotcha, yeah. uh, Coke zero. Um, and, yeah, and we, we shot it in America, but it's mainly just us three boys laughing about and doing silly stuff. But it's also got Weird Al Yankovic and Ed Helms and Homelander mm-hmm. from The Boys. And I get to Blake. kill Homelander. You get to kill Homelander. Oh, it's so fucking cool. Spoiler alert. Finally, God. When I saw that, that the blink of that in the trailer, I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Super cool. It's not a spoiler. It's in the trailer. <laughs> yeah. And I hadn't seen The Boys yet. Okay. Um, so and, just like, uh, but just I knew big... about it. But uh, And I knew about um, Tony. And then we're doing it. And then I watched The Boys recently. And just the whole time I was like, I killed that man. <laughs> I killed him. So you were just like, he's a big, nice guy when you yeah. met him. You oh, man, that's incredible. So, yeah, it's out now. If, people, if you listen to this, it's out. Go and listen. To, uh, watch it. Sorry. And listen. Just, and, watch it, and just watch it through. It's yeah. good for the algorithm, right? Sh- that's great for the algorithm. It's watch good it. for watch. comedy. It's a cool thing to have on in the background of your house for maybe 12 months. Yeah. yeah. Just when you're yeah, washing right. the it's dishes. funny. <laughs> Leave the house, do the groceries, just and put it on loop. It that's funny The world's to do. fucked anyway. Like, the carbon emissions are out <laughs> yeah. of control. It's not going to do any real damage, is it? Yeah, yeah. no. It means, it means the terrorists win if you turn it off. <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want that. Um, go, go to a Best Buy and, you know, in the middle of a riot and just turn on all the TVs and the, <laughs> the place just to Auntie Donna. I would love on. That. Oh. S- sells more TVs. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> now, you guys, are, you, you love fun and comedy and fun exclusively. Is that right? Those three, yes. Yes, <laughs> in you. that order. <laughs> but, Mason, you had a terrific idea for a podcast topic. All right, well, my initial idea was you said we're getting some very funny boys on mm. the show and I thought, well, what's the, what's the opposite? And my initial first thought, like, genuinely was – we just go around the table saying the saddest things we could think of, <laughs> but make it funny, like sad clown kind of situation. Yeah. But then I genuinely had the saddest thought I've had in a very long time, <laughs> and I just got profoundly sad. And I'm like, well, that's not going to work. So. It wasn't. Um, oh no, Auntie Donna's coming on today, was it? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the saddest thought. See, I have to do this with Auntie Donna. Oh that's... yes, <laughs> yuck. Are you going to say the sad thought? No. Are you can save it to the end. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you guys what it was. Okay. Like if James, you could cut it out. Okay, no worries. Okay, so it's like... <laughs> Can mm. I say, yeah. I'd love to option that sad story, Nick. Pretty good, right? I would like to give you $1.5 million to develop that. <laughs> oh, my take goodness. Take it. <laughs> I should have negotiated, but no, no, no I'll take it. I'll take yeah. it. But you had, a, you had a follow-up idea, though. Sad movies. Sad movies. Just sad movies. It can be sad TV shows. It can be literally whatever. <laughs> so uh, I've got a list here, and you guys obviously, you, you can Google some things as well during the show. <laughs> Which is mostly what we do. We yeah, mostly exactly, Google at the yeah. moment. I don't know you guys, <laughs> that's the process. I actually, James, yeah. uh, and, and other guests. Broden. Broden and Mark also are here. Um, I Googled saddest movies, and then it filled in saddest movies that make you cry, you, with letter U. Right. <laughs> and the... The sixth one off the out of the gate is Mark Wahlberg's Patriots Day. Yeah, that's the one about the bombing, right? Austin Strong. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that is my plane movie. I watch that legitimately whenever I'm on a plane because it's just it's it's a weird energy that movie. I bet. Yeah, it's got weird American patriotism. It's Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross who are like potentially two of the best composers for film at the moment. Oh. They did Watchmen as obviously yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, it's just and Mark Wahlberg going around going, What's going on here, Charlie Heads? <laughs> what are you doing here? You know, like and it's a weird move. That's sad. I guess it, it's obviously sad, mm. but it's also weird. That's what, what a that's combo. the energy we're after, yeah. I think like, I've got the ultimate like sad kid movie. Mm. I've actually never seen this, but I've seen the clip. 
uh, My Girl. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Oh. Did you guys watch that as traumatic? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh horrific. <laughs> Horrifically sad. So to sum up My Girl, how would you? What, what's the narrative and then what happens? Well, look, I, don't, look, I, I watched it as a kid and yeah. I've never watched it again because the only thing I remember is the kid is allergic to bees and then gets attacked by Do bees. Do they set it up or they start? He's <laughs> like, I hope I don't get stung by bees. I yes, think, yes, I think, I think yeah. so. From so it doesn't memory. come out of nowhere and then they're like, and he was allergic to bees this yeah, whole time. Yeah, but because like, it's, it's, it's Macaulay Cole. Culkin, yeah. yeah, right, and he dies from bees. And the other, the other sad movie that I remember off that. These are two movies I watched as a kid, and I've never watched again because I just I have one memory of each of these films. And the my girl is when he's getting stung by bees. It's like <laughs> this is horrible. And the other is he played in. The, I can't remember what the movie is. Maybe you guys remember. But there's a movie where he plays a bit of a psycho kid. The Talked good son. Last week, the good yeah. son. Yeah. Yeah. And he's holding him from the treehouse. Yeah, yeah. That is embedded <laughs> into my brain. So those are like one thing to you. Yes, so, yeah, and yeah. just these two Macaulay Culkin films that terrified me as a child. So and in made your me mind, so it, sad. In your mind, it's Macaulay Culkin holding another Macaulay Culkin <laughs> off a treehouse into like a big pile of bees. <laughs> just it's the ultimate sad film. I think that that movie, My Girl, is the reason that the the bees are perceived the way they are now. For so the that's last like the shark and, shark and Jaws. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, if you see a bee now, you're like, well, I'm going to be the Macaulay Culkin. I'm going to die. They're yeah, going yeah, yeah. to gonna my girl me. I've got friends who are terrified of bees who have never been stung from bees. Me. But, oh, it's you. Yeah. Okay. But think, what if I'm allergic to bees? Yeah. And then they just live that yes. life every day. I was stung by a bee <laughs> recently uh, yeah. when we were in LA. And he shooting, died. Shooting, uh, shooting our Netflix oh show. Oh, my God. Yeah. I was allergic to them and I turned into a bee. <laughs> um, no. That didn't happen. Okay. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, but, we uh, we but, would have got letters, so yeah, thank but you. But, Mark, I would like to option that. I have $1.5 million in the bank and I'll, I'll like take to... it. I should have negotiated. No, that's all right. Um, I'm probably not going to get a better deal. But uh, we, I was doing a hike. Uh, I, was, I was doing a hike. Up to the Hollywood sign. Runyon Canyon? No. Okay. To the Hollywood sign. But I, I, I was living near Runyon Canyon yeah. and did that. I was just praying I'd run into Kevin Smith. Never did. <laughs> um, I was just like, because I know he does Runyon Canyon every day. Never run into him. What would I say anyway? Hello, um, I Kevin. Like Hi, name. Kevin. He'd be like, I'm walking my dog. Fuck off. <laughs> um, and... Um, but uh, we were really thirsty, we were really, really thirsty, and then uh, and we'd run out of water and we found a fountain and the fountain. I know the fountain. You know the fountain? <laughs> Covered in bees. Yes. Oh. Covered oh. in you bees. And bra- you braved right? it. And we braved it through, mm. right? And uh, and we went up there because my friend did it first and she went up and she filled her bottle and she walked away and she was fine. And I was like, great, I'll do the same thing. <laughs> I get up there. I do bee, 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 bee. Oh, so it was like multiple stings. They all landed on me and then one stung me and then I just like backed off. Because don't uh, they, when they sting, don't they, sometimes they're all like, we're killing someone. It's the Macaulay Culkin yeah. effect. I don't think they do that. <laughs> okay. That's the my girl. Oh, okay. That's right. the my girl yeah, yeah, fear. Yeah. So you didn't speaking. have to jump into a river or anything. No, like but that. it fucking got me and it was real. It was, and it hurt. Yeah. It hurt. Did you just scrape out the, the thing? Because you got to Yeah, pulled it out yeah. and the yeah. dead bee was there. But it was fine after a couple of minutes. Nothing to be scared of. Unless you're allergic yeah. to bees, mate. I don't know. That's, I don't know if I'm allergic to bees. I have, yeah. I have two trauma. One is a TV show and one is a film. But Fox, I, I actually don't remember much of the film, but I know that I can't watch it any ever again. Okay. <laughs> Fox and the Hound, the Disney film Fox and the Hound. Oh, there's so many of those. Um, <laughs> I can't actually tell you what happens in it. I can yeah. only see images and shapes okay. in my head and I know that I – We'll never watch that film again because it really hurt me. The other one, and I'm sure this is going to be a common one, but Futurama, the dog episode. Oh, my mm. God. Mm. Like, yeah. That, 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 I can't ever, no. Because the whole episode, it, it builds up like he's trying to bring this dog back to life. Yeah. And then he makes the decision that the dog probably had a really good and happy life after I left. Yeah. And, and then, then you think that's how it's going to go. But the dog just waited for him for eight years yeah. and so then died in the, in the rain it's or whatever. It's so sad. Yeah. That I, montage. That show, has got, it sneaks some stuff in like that. I love the first yeah. four seasons of Futurama are yeah. just perfection. Very Matt Greening thing to do and very, very mm. that those writers. It could be the reason like Futurama's popularity kind of like dropped there as well. It was like it was <laughs> firing along but then I like I question ever turning on an episode of Futurama <laughs> now because I'm hoping it's not the dog episode. <laughs> You never know when they're going to throw a dog at you. Yeah. Do you have a? Does anyone have an ultimate sad movie that they watch to make themselves sad? Oh, that's a great. Because oh. I do. What's that? I there's a movie that I have. Anytime I'm really sad, mm. I put it on and it makes me fucking cry and it's very cathartic for me. Yeah. It's the wrestler. 
Yeah. I've never oh, seen yeah, The Wrestler. Yeah. yeah, The Wrestler destroys me, mm, right? I bawled my eyes out when I saw it in the cinema and it was one of the first movies that ever made me like audibly weep. Do you guys I feel like it? as you get older you get more emotional? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I feel like as I was younger I was like, I'm not, I don't cry about anything. But I hit I'm... 26. <laughs> okay, yeah, I turned yeah. 26, I started crying in movies. It just happened. Yeah. I don't know what it was. <laughs> and now I'm now I just now I just like... I'm was it the dog episode found. of Futurama? It was the dog episode <laughs> yeah, it's Futurama that got me and broke me. Um, but the wrestler, when he's like, there's a couple of moments in that movie. It's so beautifully paced, so well done. But when he's like, when he's talking to his daughter and he says, I'm just a broken down piece of meat, mm-hmm. right, is one of the saddest lines and it's delivered so beautifully. Yeah. It's it's, uh, it's Darren Aronofsky yes. doing a movie before he started losing his mind again. <laughs> he's, I don't like him anymore, but the wrestler's incredible. There was, a, there was a moment once where I was driving and my car broke down and I was hungry, so I rang Mark and I said, I've broken down, can you bring me some meat? And he weeped <laughs> for days and never showed up. It was, it was tragic. Just I wanted to ask you about that, like putting on a movie intentionally to make you sad. Yeah, yeah. Do, did you think that it's that Valve release, right? To, is that, yeah, like, that yeah. excuse to kind of like... Let yeah. some emotions out. Yeah, absolutely. You're not going down like you're doing some MMA on a punching bag or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. That's, it's just like it's a thing. It's just like I'm in a really sad mood. I can't make myself cry because I just feel nothing. This is funny stuff. <laughs> it's fun. That's this what we're here for. Stuff. That's right. I put it on and it triggers it. It's great. I, I, I love it. That is great. Yeah. I haven't seen The Fox and the Hound. Uh, Mason. You should watch it. <laughs> Why though? <laughs> you, you hate Disney movies because of all their sadness, just the right? Sad, just I gave up on it as a kid. Like I missed out on so many good movies as an adult because mm. I'm just like Dumbo. Ugh. All these, yeah, yeah. Bambi. All these, mo- these 1950s morals they're trying to yeah. drill home. That yeah. like, and they're doing it quite hard. Mm. Like when kids were kids and they had jobs at seven, you know, <laughs> you, you had to teach them, teach them how the world was by how to feel as well. Showing, this elephant has big ears, and you got to go to work. <laughs> Maybe you have big ears as well, kid. Maybe your ears are bigger, slightly bigger than your friends. You are a freak. If you can't fly and get into the circus, it's down the mines with you. Come on. (laughs) That's another sad thing as well. Like the saddest thing is the ending of the Marvel, you know, Infinity War. That ending was just so tragic, wasn't it? The... the I should know this. The death of Tony Stark. Is mm. that what you're talking about? Oh, I'm, I didn't. I've not seen that movie. I'm talking about the end of the series where he snaps his fingers and half he the won. world dies. Yeah, yeah that is really sad. Yeah. I, I haven't looked into it, but I, when I film it, I went, that's awful. And yeah, yeah. I haven't thought about it again. Well, like, I, I guess. I guess as as people who are so like clued into that universe, and we're like, well, they're they're adapting a series, and we know how it goes, and blah blah blah. We, we know they're all going to come back later or whatever. But the feeling of just loss in the audience of people who had no idea what was coming, and they're like, mm. well, was we're going to see it, we're going to see yeah. another dumb superhero movie, and it's gonna it's gonna they they're all gonna they're gonna defeat him at the end, and it's gonna be great. And just like this, you just felt the the room go, oh, this this is this is the end of this, and this isn't. They did it know. quite. They did it. We quite love these well. products. Quite, we yeah. love all these corporate yeah. products. That made me do a little tear. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 I shed a tear for Tony. Yeah, yeah. I liked the hologram at the end. I think that was the moment that was the most kind of <laughs> touching. You know, where he's like, I'm a hologram, but everything will be okay. But it's like he's not because he was mm. he died earlier in the movie. Yeah. You've not seen it. Yeah, yeah. just have a broken. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar. <laughs> they, um, but at the, end of, at the end of Infinity War, I grieved then I'm going to have to spend thirty more dollars. Oh, uh, oh, you've done Broden. it. You've done it. Broden. You've done. It. And you've got to get popcorn. Shit. It's a whole thing. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah. Apparently, there's. I'm sure you know about it and have spoken about it. But the scene that was supposed to happen between Tony and his adult daughter. Yeah, yeah, right. The, yeah. Uh, do you know about this, no. Broden? So after he snaps, uh, there was supposed to be a scene where it's Tony talking to his daughter, grown up. But then they cut it because they were like. No one knows who she is because we haven't put her in it before. It's just he's talking to this older girl. It's just weird. Yeah. Is this is this a woman to be emotionally resonant? It's is this like, a woman he slept with in one yeah. of the previous movies? We can, we don't can't the remember. Fuck is that? Imagine, imagine having that reaction. It, you watch it. He goes into that weird blood dimension or whatever. That was where it was supposed to be, right? Is that, yeah, yeah, I think the one so. that Thanos goes into, or whatever. Kids movies. Never ending story when the horse drowns in yeah. the mud. You guys Betray remember that? You, yeah. Yeah. I don't remember that. The mm. only thing I remember from Never Ending Story is how fucking weird that flying cat is. <laughs> it's super. Falcor? Falcor. Yeah. Fal- have you watched it recently? Not recently. I wouldn't no. Falcor is it's sus. <laughs> Falcor is sus. 
Like, there's some real, like, Just is things. weird mm. around the characters. Yeah. I don't want to get into it, but it's <laughs> not cool. From memory, the horse swamp scene yeah. is quite early. Yes. Like, it's in the first half an hour. I don't know. The swamp of despair or whatever yeah. it's called. Yeah. You're just going along. You're yeah. excited for a big adventure, and they really punch you right between the eyes at, in that film. <laughs> it looks like they drowned a horse as well. If you go back, it looks like they take <laughs> a Dare horse. Dare we Google it? <laughs> <laughs> some, like, like, even, obviously, they probably, probably didn't kill a horse. Horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But submerging, well, we'll see, won't submerging we? a horse in, <laughs> in mud is... I'm confident. I'm not, I mean, it was probably a puppet. I don't know. Mason. You could probably <laughs> type into Google did yes. and it will auto filter <laughs> the course in Never Ending Story actually get drowned. <laughs> but yes, no, that is... The, the 80s... 80s is brutal. I don't like, know what the lessons were then. It's like with the Disney thing. It's like your parents could die. You can lead a horse to a swamp, but don't walk <laughs> yeah. it in, I think. Is yeah. the, oh, okay, uh, is right. Yeah, yeah. He should, but he shouldn't have taken the horse through the sad swamp. He should know no, that. No, happy swamp, different story. <laughs> yeah, that's right. has, has everyone seen The Notebook and did it have yeah. any effect on you? I think it, I, I think it would more now. That was yeah. one of the first things Claire and I watched together. Yeah. And then I gave her the DVD. I'm like, this is actually for you. It was a very romantic <laughs> gesture. Blu-ray? True story. No, no, this is pre-Blu-ray. Oh, not Blu-ray. It was, regular, it, was before, it was regular DVDs. That explains a lot. It wasn't a VHS. <laughs> that explains a lot. <laughs> but what were you going to say? Oh, my, my memory of the notebook is like watching it and thinking, oh, this is fine. I was with my girlfriend at the time. I was mm. quite young. And then the movie finishing and looking down. And she cried so much into my T-shirt and gone see-through. Like, I was just, like, soaked with her tears. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I guess it's sad. I, yeah, she doesn't. It's her. I don't know. So <laughs> whatever. You, were you like, oh, it's a bit saccharine or whatever. It's not Yeah, it's, yeah it was a, I think yeah, a little a much. Like that. A yeah. little much, you know. It was. Yeah. Uh, I felt like I was being manipulated into feeling sad. I think the die together in bed together got me. It's like, that's, that, that's not how it happens. One dies and the other one hangs around for three years. And then they <laughs> die of sadness. I want to see that. That story. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Just three years of him living his life, shuffling around, looking at photos. <laughs> and then he checking the change. Checking the change. <laughs> the I guess we're keeping that in for no, that I don't joke. Know. <laughs> no, we take we leave, we take it out. Um the horse wasn't the horse lived. Thank God. Okay. Was, was it a pup was it a puppet horse head? Uh, they submerge? No, it was a real horse. The horse was supposed to sink. Uh, but but the the actor did and also broke his leg and his back. The so, kid? Yep. Holy shit. That's that kind of sad. sad, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can I, while we're on sad movies, can I please bring up, I've been, I've been waiting to come on here for a long time and I want to bring up the experience of sitting in between these two men. <laughs> for I, I ran into these guys in an early screening of Joker. Joker. And to sit <laughs> next to these two men as they watch that film. Because, like, I'm like you listening. I go and hear these guys talk about all the films and mm. I'm, their opinion matters to me. And to sit next to them as that, which is a sad film. So yeah, it sure. Yeah, 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 it's sad. And to hear their reviews live was just, like, the most incredible experience. Oh, really? Were we talking during the... You weren't, but you were doing little movements and <laughs> breaths and, like... Oh, and, and then, tells, sure, yeah. And they, had, tells. and they had immediate reviews. Like, I turned to them and Mason was just, like, 100%, like, he was Texas in voting. Like, he was, like... <laughs> Hated it, like, yeah. and and it was and James like oh um, yeah, and you both haven't really moved from that, have you? Not no. really. We yeah, watched it one more time, didn't we? I don't we think did, we pretty yeah. much stayed I, the same. It should be a thing for Big Sandwich or a Patreon or one of your things <laughs> is you can sit next to these guys for a movie and see how they respond. <laughs> but I wanted to also lean over to them because I I knew there were going to be sad moments and just and lean over to James and then go. He's not laughing now, is he? <laughs> I was really keen to do that, but I never had the confidence. You should have do done it. it. Oh, that would, oh, I would have loved that. He's becoming the Joker. <laughs> 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 Mike, what do you think of that movie? I know you're a, you're a Batman fan. I understand. we nearly did a Batman topic because you know you love Batman. I do love Batman yeah. very big, and the, I I've watched the I shouldn't do it to myself because the trailers can ruin things. But I've watched the the Batman trailer like crazy twenty right? yeah. times. I'm I'm so excited. I think that I think it's going to be really cool. I. I really liked the Joker. I, th- I thought it did things for me. It did things that even the comic books haven't been able to do, mm. in my opinion. Which was like set up a Gotham where it makes sense that the Joker would have cronies and would have people that followed him, and set up a Gotham that makes sense for me for Bruce Wayne to walk into and want to change and want to save. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. And that I loved. That yeah. that I really loved. Like the taxi driver yeah. stuff, whatever, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. give or take, uh-huh. that's cool. That is what it is. But like the world building of that. I thought yeah, what yeah, it right. did for Gotham, I'd, I'd never yeah. seen it painted that way. I thought that was really clever. So imagine me, right, because the... the <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. The it's always about Broden, The general right. vibe walking out of it, I was like, I love this. 
And then walking out, all my only feedback was these guys. And they're like, no. But then the world kind of said yes. But for all, and, and I saw it a week before anyone else saw it. So I was walking around for a week going, is, is, am I broken? Because I thought that was good. And these guys are walking around going, nah, no good. Bad luck. I didn't say no. I You're think broken. there's I, – I, I, I'm broken with you in terms really? of like, yeah, the, like the on-the-nose like taxi driver stuff. And, you know, when he's yelling about what the movie's about in front of yeah. the studio audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, I think there is some really good stuff in that movie. Yeah, And yeah. that part of the city building as well. But also yeah. the rule is that if I disagree with your opinion on a comic book movie, <laughs> the rule is I must personally attack you. We know this from online. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so. true, yeah. <laughs> so I hate you both. I understand. We've, I think people listening to this will appreciate that. <laughs> Just quickly, do you yeah. want to see like a sequel in that universe or are you like that's a one and done? You don't need Batman to come in and go, this is a shit show. I don't. I, yeah. I, 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 that's what I'm really ho- like uh, enjoying about kind of maybe where DC are moving are just mm-hmm. these like little one shots, yeah, you know, same. like the black labels, mm. you know, that, that kind of thing. You see Batman's dick and stuff like yeah, that. Well, yeah. I have that issue. Yeah. Do you I have the, the original? Ones, I have the dick issue. <laughs> <laughs> I have the dick issue. It's so exciting. Because, like, I, I, I got that because I had it, you know, because I love Azarello and I was like, you know, anything he's doing, just give it to me. Yeah. Uh-huh. And um, signed up, got it, read it, didn't see the dick. I didn't see the dick the first yeah, time. Yeah, you'd have I to kind of know what you're looking for. Yeah, you're not expecting You're not going in. <laughs> yeah, and then I went in the next month to the store. I was like, oh, it, do you have my copy of two, like, damned issue two? And they were like, no, obviously because... The dick situation. The dick situation. <laughs> yeah, I was right. like, what are you talking about? And then I looked up and I see it behind glass and like <laughs> behind the, and you know the price has gone up to seventy five dollars and I'm like, Oh, what's what's happened? And they walked me through it. I went home, looked at the dick, had a great time. <laughs> Yeah, and that's my favorite part of that is that like if you go now to like a comics buyer's guide or whatever, like that has all the prices of you know yeah. valuable comics. It's like Batman Damned Issue One. You can see his dick. You can't see his dick. It's two different prices. <laughs> so how much is Batman's penis worth? I guess like it. I mean the 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 censored one is probably worth like cover price. I guess. Yes. Yeah. So, it is, yeah. Seventy five bucks. Batman's dick is worth seventy. That's I seventy dollars. I saw a copy in, in in a New York comic book shop, but it had been. Uh, I think it had been signed potentially on the dick. Um, uh, yeah. On the dick. Plenty of room there on that. By dick Batman. Yeah. Look at my dick. <laughs> um, it had been signed, and it was about. It was. I think it was one hundred eighty five US. Okay. Well, but right. mine isn't signed, so it wouldn't be. But for a millionaire like Bruce, it's actually not. That's that not much. a lot of money. <laughs> it'd be okay. That's okay, not a lot of yeah, money. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should have done a Batman topic. <laughs> like, <I was> thinking, <laughs> well, Batman is sad because he's, he's sad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we guys... can pivot. We're not. We're not married to this. Absolutely not. But are you guys, <laughs> we're, we're, and people are all on the verge of turning off anyway because they're like, "I'm so sad." <laughs> with all... We talk about Batman, but I was going to say, like, it's um, yeah, you're right. It makes sense in that in that movie that people would just be like, "Why? Why are all these thugs like lining up to just be just work for work for the Joker when yes. he's just going to kill them every time they yes. mess up?" I've never thing. seen that before. Yeah. I thought it was the first time they actually gave it some like some proper context yeah. and I was like I was like that's something that's never been done in that comic book world you know and, and I love that I love when writers try to like break new ground or give mm. me something interesting especially with the character that's fucking 80 years old like yeah. it's so hard to do something new and I felt like it did yeah, you know? I, th- yeah I, th- I agree with you because I think I love that they can go in different directions now it doesn't have to be all tied into this one continuity and that's how you end up with like that Justice League movie that came out which we all enjoyed but uh <laughs> What a, did, did any are, are any comic book like any of the Batman movies like affect you guys? You're like, oh, that goat just moved, and I was like, what the fuck? Like so the oh, puppet, the, just, the, the puppet hand goat. just like moved. The Han Solo puppet. Oh, goat. I thought it was like, oh god. Yeah, sorry, we're conjuring it. Sorry, uh, <laughs> you've done a real Corey Taylor Slipknot thing with this, haven't you? Because no one knew what you looked like, and now you've come out. That's right. Yeah. As a and human, I, why would you hide that like face? That. Because I was a teacher, and I'm like, uh, I can't. Oh, I'll get fired. Very <laughs> swearing. Uh, quite a straightforward answer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I felt horribly disfigured. Yeah. I also don't want to be looked at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very much. Like strange. <laughs> Um, I want I want to be able to say my opinions, but nobody knows what I look like. I, I watched yeah. The Dark Knight Rises the other day for the first time, and yeah. my opinion of it has diminished quite substantially since first seeing it. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe because it's not in I didn't watch it in IMAX, but um, <laughs> sure. but I was moved by I think it's just a nice the line where he's pretty much says to uh, Commissioner Gordon that he's Bruce Wayne in a very nice way. Yeah, you know, and that you put you put a put a you, coat on a kid and whatever. Well, I'm Batman. <laughs> and you once put a coat on me or something like that, he yeah. says. And he's, now I've got to fly away. <laughs> but I'm not really dead. He says, he says something like that and it really moved me. I found them a your lot. Coat's, your coat's the cape now. <laughs> <laughs> I found all the Michael Caine stuff in that really, like those are the pivotal moments for me that were quite touching. In particular in The Dark Knight Rises where he's like, I'm back and I'm Batman and I'm loving it and I've got a new magic knee. And Alfred's like, 
I can't do this. Like, yeah. you'll kill yourself and yeah. I'm leaving. And yeah. he did, and he leaves. Yeah. Like, he does, I thought that was really great. It's a Fernie Branca or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Fernie Branca. Um, he, like, that, that movie for me, I saw that movie too many. I've watched it too many times. I saw it eight times at the cinema, mm. um, four times in IMAX, Broden. Well, that's how many millimetres? <laughs> I couldn't even tell you. Um, but um, but uh, so I've, I've watched it to the point now where I just, I only see the flaws. Yeah. I, I, I only you went see too the far. flaws. Now, I went too far because I agree. I think it has, what it does emotionally is so poignant. And, and again, I, I felt like it broke new ground. I felt like I was, I've never seen that scene, that scene mm. where, Batman is like, I'm, I'm fucking doing this. And Alfred's like, if you do this, you're going to yeah, die. And I don't want to watch that. So yeah. I'm leaving. Like, that's so, that's huge. Like, no, no comic book movie had gone yeah. there before, yeah, right. you Because know? you think he'd come back at the end and be like, I'll fix your back. Yeah. But he, do- he literally doesn't come back. Yeah. yeah. But then, like, the fact that, like, Batman tries to fight Bane and then Bane beats him and breaks his back. So then Batman goes, lies down for a little bit and then comes back and then just fights him again and wins. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, it's yeah. like... Come on, guys. And there's even that line, he's like, oh, if you come back to die, he's like, I've come back to stop you. <laughs> it's like you had a long time to think of a, a better thing to say. Or just yeah. say nothing. Just start hitting him. But, like, shouldn't <laughs> he, like, use his brain a bit more? Isn't that yeah. the thing? Like, he tried to fight him with brawn. He couldn't. I, I feel like the lesson should have been, all right, I've got to be smarter. I've got to get a gun. I've got to shoot him in the head. <laughs> yeah. all right. he, he got really good at jumping, so maybe he had to defeat Bane by jumping over ledges. <laughs> like, yeah. like the, 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 the hole taught him to jump over ledges. <laughs> just something. Not just, I'm going to punch or, you again. Or, or jump on his head and then he turns into a smaller, slightly <laughs> smaller man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then one more time and you got him, yeah. I reckon. <laughs> well, yeah, because the revelation kind of was, oh, hit him in that mask that he wears. And it's like, that's your Batman. You should, that's the first thing you should have done. Yeah. That's yeah. the face. That's where you punch anyone. <laughs> and it's pretty obvious those are some valves going into it. He's not just yeah. wearing it for aesthetics. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, right, yeah. come on, Bruce. Yeah, it was pre-COVID, so, you know. You... <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. No. My, my, my most emotional moment in, those, in that trilogy is the point at the dark, in the start of the Dark Knight, where there's the bank heist, and you see William Fickner, he's the, the bank manager, he's got yeah. the shotgun and he fires, and he's like, You and your friends are dead. And I'm like, Oh, they're all friends. Even I thought you were excited for that character's arc. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, like the death of Heath, Heath Ledger makes that movie because oh. he's not a sad character, he's horrible. Like it's mm. not a moment where he's like, I only do this because nobody likes my smile or whatever. You don't get you don't get any closure no. on where he's from. But the everything else surrounding that movie is like, this is a great performance and he's twenty seven mm. and we'll never see this again. Yeah, hundred no, percent. No, yeah. Like yeah, I remember watching it the first time and the first scene at the at the the gangland meeting is just <sighs> That's so incredible. Mm. But then also when he's hanging upside down at the end, you mm. know that it's wrapping up and his arc's ending and this is his his final thing. It is properly moving. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And people will write in and say he was in a different movie afterwards, but who cares? Imaginarium of Dr. Yes, Parnassus, yes, so which forth. is a bad film. <laughs> it's not, not a good, a good one. movie, yeah. Not I a good one. It. No, Terry Sad. Gilliam, he's just, he doesn't. Have you seen Don Quixote? Have you seen his Don Quixote I haven't. Movie? No, is it good? It's a fucking mess. Man. Oh, <laughs> it's, so, it's such a mess. We talked about how the, the road to making that movie, because it took like 30 years. Yeah, and he just should have stopped. Oh, <laughs> That's no. his thing. It's his thing. He seems to just be constantly... I'm not, I don't want to say cursed, but there seems to be something with Terry Gilliam. Yeah. Mm. We hate the movie Brazil, don't we? I don't like the movie Brazil. I hate <laughs> it. I tapped out at Brazil. Yeah, he's just like, I I'd, I'd, I'd really appreciate what he's going for, but mm. I feel like he needs, he's like Darren Aronofsky for me, he needs a, just a real good script. Yeah. You give him a good script and he'll do a great visual job, you know, but when he's making it up on his, as he goes and writing it himself. Nah, yeah. I like the adventures of Baron Munchausen. But I think that's just because it's just a weird concept. It's like a yeah, right. But the movie itself is like Brazil. <laughs> it's like Brazil. Didn't like, didn't like Brazil. It's a bad movie. Would you guys see Darren Aaron's Batman? You know who was going to be Batman? He lives yeah. in a garage and is oh, Alfred's oh my a God. Mark Maron's garage. Yeah. Who's Mark <laughs> Maron's <laughs> garage? Who lives? Um, it feels like Matt Reeves's could be. Close to Something that. to that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. It might have been a step too far. Maybe maybe that's like that's probably why it didn't get made was because it was yeah. he was changing too much of the the fundamentals, the foundations. There's certain things that yeah, I think you've yeah. got to have at least for the moment until people are like so bored with Batman or or it's been so successful that then you can do like an else worlds thing. But it almost felt else worlds yeah. his pitch, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The Batman Superman movies and Man of Steel. Did you guys feel anything in that? I oh, know for me the Jonathan Kent scene 
with um, we talked about this on Caravan of Garbage. Mm. It makes me just emotional just talking about it. Mm -hmm. Where he's like, I just want to be your son. I don't want to be from another planet. He's like, you are my son. Like, it doesn't yeah, matter. Nice. Like, I thought that's a really good saying. That's, are there other moments in that when that's Batman's definitely hitting a father Superman? watching Batman for that's sure? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> my boy, <laughs> <laughs> my indestructible boy. Oh. <laughs> Did you weep when he hurt his foot and then just sort of didn't run? <laughs> oh, yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> Superman didn't what come a, get him. Uh, why did he get him? We'll, we'll, so get, we'll get messages. But they're like, well, he didn't want to get him because he would have revealed his... Okay. Yeah. He's I'll, really I'll quick. He's really He's quick. really quick. Like, I think you got, you, you're the one who said it. It's like, why didn't he just go and get the dog? <laughs> yeah. like, obviously, there was time to get the dog and come back. Yep. He would. That door would not have stopped him. He would have walked <laughs> right through it. Anyway, whatever. It's done. Those movies, what, where, where do you stand on any of that? Emotions or just in general? I, I can't explain to you why. Mm. I don't know why this happened, but I cried at the start of Batman versus Superman. What With the, uh, the the buildings are falling down and Batman's there. And the, the, and, and the, and the little Batman are, where, where he's like lifting up and the oh, bats yeah, and okay, the like yeah. sort of dreamy Batman like secrets. It, I don't know why, but I was like... Again, I think I think Zack Snyder is brilliant visually. I really love his visual style, mm. and it might be a bit over the top and a bit dark or whatever, but like um, there's uh, Batman versus Superman I don't think is a great film all up, but it has incredible scenes that I love to revisit. Mm -hmm. right? I agree with that, yeah. And, uh, and I don't know why, but I cried at the start of it. I was like, this is amazing. And then I, I look over to my cousin. My cousin was like, this is the worst shit I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, I'll, 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 I'll shut up. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. There's, I, I think there's. Uh, I've I've heard this somewhere before. This is not mine, but uh, Snyder will sacrifice scenes for moments. I think he does great moments, you know, uh, yeah. and like he'll he'll have really nice, poignant moments in uh -huh. his film, but he'll sacrifice that for scenes and, and overall storytelling because a lot of his scenes are like, well, that's good and that had a great bit in it and that had a great visual moment, but that doesn't actually fit into like you know, yeah. like trying to do the Death of Superman stuff. You know, just visually, but then also you didn't feel some anything of the... with that when he sacrificed himself with the spear. I mean, a little bit. I, yeah. I was having just a fun little Justice League romp. The yeah, Trinity, yeah. I was having a fun Trinity romp. Uh, sure, romp yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. I really liked the third act in that movie. It was just like, oh, this is a different movie. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> We've just gone somewhere else now. Fantastic. <laughs> this is mostly Auntie Donna. Like any when we're not either on camera or on a podcast, it literally at airports. It's in true. The, it's literally just this. Yeah, right. we talk <laughs> about comic book movies. So yeah, yeah. I've your, your, your podcast. I mean, you're, you're delving. Who's into that engaging stuff. the most reluctantly? Sam. Sam, Sam our head writer, uh -huh. is like he. The things he points out from these movies is it'd be, it'd be worth when you talk to him on Caravan of Garbage. Yeah. He leaves, and the thing that jumps out to me, he always talks about. He, he loves um, that a, a Justice League. Is it Justice League? Yeah. A, a graffiti artist writes on the statue, "False God." <laughs> like what graffiti artist? I know, that's Batman versus Superman. Yeah. I'm thinking of a different. Uh, I want to hear that would be there. <laughs> Who? What cool graffiti artist? False God. Yeah. Like just the most heightened, <laughs> like. It's just He's, a group of like graffiti artists all wearing berets, and one of them puts yeah. it on there, and they're like, mm, "Good, yeah. you've done very well here." I'm very keen to hear. Oh, he has a thing about Justice League where where they're talking about how um they're burying the mother boxes, or they're getting rid of the mother oh, boxes, yeah, yeah. and it cuts to the humans, and they're burying it. Apparently, um, oh, yeah, uh, one of our from you was it you? I was at the cinema with him. I remember, cinema. and I was sitting next to him and his partner, and I was sitting with my partner, and they're showing you yeah, everyone hiding those boxes, and then Sam just turns to his partner and just shows. They buried it like two inches deep in the ground. Like, so he just with his hands. Yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> this deep. <laughs> this is the detail that yeah. he pulls them up yeah. on is very funny. And cause, but then there's Max, who none of us usually, I would say 90% of the time, 90% of the time, will the majority of us will have a similar reaction to, to these movies and uh -huh. we've all got a similar taste in terms of what yeah, we right. like and we dislike. Max is a fucking wild card. I can never figure <laughs> no. out whether he's going to like something or hate it and usually the things I love he hates yeah, and, yeah. and so he engages with it. A little reluctantly, but it's just he always has the opposite opinion <laughs> most of the time. And when he has like, because I'll watch something and I'll go, I like this. Max will fucking hate this. And then he'll come in the next day and be like, I really liked it. I'm like, I don't know you. I don't, I don't know you. I can't gauge you. That's how I feel about Mason now. Hello. Of the Joker, I'm like, you gotta love Joker. And he's like, I, I, don't, I don't love it. You don't I like it because it's not very comic booky, right? Yes, correct. I was a little yeah. surprised how much you hated it. 
Like I thought you'd be like, well, I like this and I like the like the makeup. James, I do like this <laughs> and sometimes I like that, but I didn't like <laughs> the thing. I'm off the data that I've got from you now, the SNL sketch where they do a gritty movie of Oscar the Grouch. Yep. I feel like that's your, fa- that's your favourite sketch ever. That would have to be off the data I've accrued. I mean, it's certainly the one good sketch they made that year. <laughs> so I like that. Um, it's good. Because that's sketch. like your opinion, isn't it? Like as you can take – I think you said at the time you can take – um, what's his name? The main guy from Too Fast. Oh, Fast Dom Boys. Toretto. Yeah, yeah. You do a, a gritty Dom Toretto, and you'd have the same result, which is a fair point. I and know. I would like to see that. And I'm optioning you that for one point five million. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so rich. I don't, know, I don't know who's got the money anymore. <laughs> yeah. um, look, I don't know what my I don't know what my tastes are anymore, and I don't. I'm also so old that I don't care to justify it anymore. I'm mm. not like, well, you know, as a fan of cinema, I'm just like, <laughs> no, I do like the second Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. I liked it. I, feel I don't like... care what anybody said. I like Crank yeah. was there. It was good. <laughs> That's... Lo- they, they fought him on the top of the Technodrome and I don't care that you, you oh, think it's dumb. That's worth bringing up. I just That's what I love about you guys is how interesting your opinions are and how you take them with a grain of salt. So that's awesome. But I, I, I recent, we Mark and I disagree on oh, this. Oh, big time. I'm um, talking about Ninja Turtles. Is I have watched it. I watched it yesterday, actually. You're talking about the, the first. original Ninja Turtles. Yeah. We watched it recently too. Yeah. Um, did you care about it? Garbage? Yeah, we did a commentary. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Big right. Sandwich. I, I think it's a bad movie. <laughs> really? Um, what do you? What do you? I love think? it. I still liked it. Yeah. I adore it. Yeah. I, now I'm Mason. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Welcome it's visually... to the club, Broden, but not this club. You're out of this club. You're <laughs> yeah. in a different club. Yeah. Um, I think visually awesome. Uh-huh. And I followed the actor who plays April April O'Neil yesterday. Judith Ho. Yeah. 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 She's doing great. Yeah. Um, but, like, the storyline really bummed me out. Yeah, right. But um, Just, like, because it's sad or just, crap. like, crap? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about your... things? Say your thing about it. You've got one thing. I don't remember. I, I can't be held accountable for the things the I thing say. The thing that he said to me was he was like, <laughs> he was like... It's all going along fine, and then split, and then their and then their master gets kidnapped, and they don't know where it is. So they go to the country for a couple of days, and they <laughs> yeah. just hang out. That's what he hates about so they it. They do, and they do, and they get, and they don't care anymore. But That's right. They, they're not emotionally invested. But they think he's dead, don't they? Because they're like, because then when that split, he has mm. a vision. And he's yeah. like, oh, Splinter's alive. So I think they were going, they didn't know he was there. But why would you just go to the country then? Because like, it was the hideout? Was yeah, but they just chill. Like, go do something about it with your, your turtles. <laughs> Have a suck this out. And Raphael was, like, seriously injured. They had to, he had to rehabilitate in a bath. They had to put him in a bath. It just got very, uh, <laughs> the, the importance of being earnest. They just retired to the countryside for a little bit. And just... <laughs> they, they just took 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 summer in the country. Um, and they have a I... dream vision with Splinter. What yeah. about that? That's, that's cool. Um, I mean, it's not cool. <laughs> no, it's not very I, cool. I still it's... own that. One thing I've held on to from my childhood is the Turtle Green VHS. Yeah, we oh, talked yeah, about right. that. Yeah, right. Yeah. The yeah. clamshell. Yeah, I've yeah. got it, man. You know, the Pizza Hut toys. I the love it. Oh. And, and it was so weird watching that movie because all my memories of that movie are from this, like, worn-out VHS. Yeah. So the movie is so dark, right, and so visually unappealing. But I, I, that's just how I've seen it. And then watching it, like, on Blu-ray now – Feels like a different movie yeah, right. for me. It's very bizarre. I have a very odd reaction to you seeing. Watch it through a tinted window. Yeah, it's all cleaned <laughs> up and shit. It's, mm. it's bizarre. Okay, yeah. but good movie, right? We all love agree. It. I yeah. love it. And I all, love how we it all looks. agree. I love how it looks and the. Gr- I'm not on board. We all think um, it's great. The, the, I love how it looks, and I wish they'd do that more. Well, recently uh, we didn't do news with you guys, but they did talk about the, the writer of that wants to make a sequel. I mean, You're they joking. did. It's, yeah. They made a second one, but it's not uh, yeah, real. It's not 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 I, I can't. I, c- I can't get on with the secret of the ooze. <laughs> I like it, but they're not the same. No, it's just... I only like it because I saw it then. If I saw it now, I'd be like, "Where's Krang?" That's what I'd yell. You'd wonder where Krang was. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Though I did wonder that a lot of the, uh, as a kid. I'm like, "Where's all the stuff? Where's mm. Bebop and Rocksteady? Where's mm. all the robots and mm. stuff?" But you know. It's different. And that's sad. <laughs> it's on my list. Oh, to that's read on the page, so That's good. <laughs> I really good. want to read the original, uh, the the comic series yeah. because apparently it is very, very dark. They're, yeah, they're mostly the same, right? From memory, aren't they? The first, like the first volume. I'll bring, I'll bring them to Stupid Old Studios. I'll drop really? Them off. Yeah. Oh, I would love that. You're very welcome. Do people know where you guys? Yeah, you can. Google. If, you, if you Google where we work. On the street view, it's Mark and I and Sam <laughs> out the window waving. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> but if you just Google Auntie Donna, the address for Stupid Old Studios okay. comes well, up. Just, Should yeah. we just continue giving more and more details about how you can Google <laughs> the location? Yeah. So this is a dream come true. I love talking to you guys about comic books. I was just saying to James before we started, the podcast for me is usually – 
this, mm-hmm. but I'm just yelling into the ether as I go for a walk or, or I'm at the gym or something. So mm-hmm. it's been good to hear you listen to me this time. And it's probably the same for all your listeners. I feel like I'm doing, what's one of those things where you, what's it called? Like a, a oh, no, fan oh, fiction? Maze. Yeah, <laughs> maze.com. Oh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we auctioned this off, yeah. We feel the same because your podcast is also great. Add all your sketches and now your Netflix show. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We'll just take a moment and... You know, recognize that we all love each other. You guys champion do. us all the time, and I and I very much appreciate it. And we see it all the time in our comments. People coming and saying, "Here, because of Sunday movies." Uh, I mm. probably sh- uh, we use too many of your clips in my videos. I should probably not do that as much. No, more. <laughs> okay. you, can use them all. you can use them all. I okay. give you full IP ownership, even with the Netflix stuff. Because I feel even. Like- we'll give you B roll. <laughs> okay, we'll, I'll no. send. It'll, it'll be in your yep. inbox. You can have my bank account details, <laughs> uh, my child, whatever you want. Stupid old studios. That's where you yeah, work. You We'll yeah. take it. Yeah. Harry Potter where Dumbledore dies. <laughs> just, uh, oh, sad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sad They're all stuff. kind of sad because he's an nothing. orphan. And, but no. he's got his, uh, I don't know, is that sad that his parents died? I, I don't give a <laughs> sh- I don't give shit. But uh, I'll tell you that I went to Universal when we lived in LA making this show. I went to Universal Studios four times, yeah, in- yeah. including the last day it was open because of COVID. I was there. Oh, you were down to the wire there. Yeah, I was like with the hand sanitizer and going on everything. So I like Harry Potter World. Yeah, yeah. Harry Potter World is great. And if Universal dies because of uh, finance, mm. then I will be sad. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So it's not your fault because you had hand your best. Sanitizer. You, you had That's hand right. sanitizer. You, you tried did, your best. And you, you did what you could. Yeah. What a shit show. I'm going to talk about About Time for a little bit if you guys don't mind. You want to see About Time? Yeah. It's kind of it's pitched as a love story of mm. like Rachel McAdams is being tricked by this man who can time travel to love him and what it, you know what I mean. It starts like that, but it quickly the classic love story. Oh, yes. That classic love story. I was thinking of Kate and Leopold. All right, we can talk about Kate. No, and no, no, I, I haven't seen either of these movies. <laughs> the thing about Ninja Turtles is that <laughs> it, but it pivots into a story about father and son, which you mentioned before, Broden, that I love, and that's what the movie is really about. It's about letting go and like your parents getting yeah. older, and you know, you, mm. James, do you want to cry? Yeah, a little bit. Do you want to cry? <laughs> a little bit. Um, the British film, maybe, Nick, you've seen it, and when did you last see your father? If you want to cry mm. and you have a okay, even bad, a relationship with your father. <laughs> have you yeah. met your father? Ooh. How's your father? Watch that movie. Mm. It just, like, hits on for a son and a father moment. It's, um, who's in it? Uh, Colin Firth, the King's Colin Firth, King's yeah. Colin yeah. Firth. Mr. Uh, King's Lynn. It's a, it's just a nice British king. Um, <laughs> a, lot of king, king a lot of king ties. Uh, yeah, that's a film that before I wept, I wept. At that. What was that called, sorry? And when did you last see your father? All oh, right. That sounds like it's going to fuck you oh, up just you, from the title. I want you all to watch it. <laughs> 2007. You just, you just go right. into the cinema and it's it's your mum on the screen and she's like, and when did you last see your father? And then she just. Oh, God. 90 minutes of her just locked on you. <laughs> Jim Broadbent. This, is a, this has got a cast. Yeah. It's, I mean, you know, like a cast that I know. It's one of, you know, Britain does really good mid level films where they fund them through the lottery. And I think it's one of those. And it's yeah, just right. a really beautiful and sad, yeah. sad movie. <laughs> By golly. That is sad. I, th- I assume. <laughs> yes, it is sad. Uh, Fault in Our Stars, any, have anyone got anything to say Oh, about no, that? that's that. I, I fucking it. laughed and laughed at that movie. <laughs> I've heard people have different reactions. Oh, I didn't. Movie. Like, there's just a moment in that movie that just, like, killed me, right? It's very obvious what's going to happen in that movie yeah. if you haven't seen it. It's like one girl's got cancer She's that's dating the fault in her stars. That's the fault in her stars. <laughs> Another guy had cancer. No fault in his stars. Previous fault. Remission. Previous fault. fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a moment, and and I think it's like if you've had any experience with cancer, it'll like it'll get you. Right? Yeah, right. But there's a moment in that movie where they they go in the Anne Frank's house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? I do know this. Yeah. They go in the Anne Frank's house, and that's very hard for her to get up the little ladder, and she's because she's got an oxygen tank, and mm. she's like, no, I want to do it, and they get up there, and then the cancer boy's there as well, and the cancer <laughs> girl's there. And then um, and they get up there. Is that their names? I think it might be, but I can't remember. <laughs> and then they, and then what they. Should we call our children? <laughs> <laughs> Working titles: The Fault in Our Cancer. <laughs> fault in our cancers. You can cut this bit. <laughs> but they get up the top. They get up the top, and then they and then they share their first kiss, right? In Anne Frank's in baby. Anne Frank's nice. like yeah. addict, right? And it's like okay, but then all the people who are also visiting Anne Frank's house on that day. Start applauding them. <laughs> and it's they, like, you don't know these people. Yeah. You have no emotional investment in these two. You don't know how this has been done. They're us, for them. the audience. They right? do the Saved by the Bell. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. 
Yeah, they just start. They're like, this is this is awesome. And that's oh, so everyone that ever like, this is awesome. That's so disrespectful. It's so well. disrespectful. Yeah. Oh, when I was in Amsterdam, I didn't go to Anne Frank's house because I was like, I feel weird like going up there. Yeah, let alone t- taking somebody up there and making well, it out. Make yeah. out session, yeah. a little yeah. smooch. They should have just done it up a hill. And do- that's right. Exactly. <laughs> There's beautiful parks and hills in Amsterdam. But I yeah. checked out there when they everyone started out, clapping. Yeah. I was like, I'm not. Oh, I can't. Yeah. I can't do this. Um, I can just run through a few more because the farewell. I wanted to say, Aquafina is the farewell. Oh, I've I've started that. Like it's a one with her grandma's dying, but they're not telling her she's yeah, dying. Yeah, it's yeah. a China America film, mm. and it's oh that I was I did this one. <laughs> uh, so that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Inside Out. It's about emotions, and it's like you can be sad. Nothing. Uh, up, yeah, nothing. The, also the start nothing. of up. Oh, up is yeah. Up, up is up brutal. Yeah. That's all yeah. people remember though, because there's a whole story about finding a bird in that yeah. in that movie. Oh, yeah, it just turns into a, an adventure, <laughs> another romp. There's yeah. another romp in that. I think I think my emotional arc is just old men doing anything. Yes. Like it's just like if you <laughs> now see, we have to keep it in, Mason. No, nah, we're taking it out still. Um, <laughs> just uh, just an old man by himself doing anything is inherently like oh, yeah, it gets right. you. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm a year away like from that. Like eating. Super alone, or yeah, like, for sure. Yeah, yeah okay. but that's the thing. Like, as a man, I do stuff by myself all the time, and I'm yeah. just like, I'm having a great time eating this sad. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing: is people are watching you, yeah, and crying. They are crying. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. The better dressed the old man is, as well, the worse. You know, oh, like, do you think so? You know, like if they've got a three piece nice brown suit on, oh, yeah, right. right. If yeah. they have a bow tie, yeah. If they've yeah. gone to the shops. And they've put on a suit, and you see a man at the shopping center like yeah. that's. Is that because it's like that's their thing for the day? Yeah, that's their outing. Yeah, and they've put you know the suggestion. Is, the, the suggestion <laughs> is that no one cares about them, but they're still putting in the effort, and they oh. have this opinion. <laughs> like, like <laughs> see, it's a creep of the thing I said it earlier. Is, uh, that's that's what you're looking at. But when I you also, see that. But I also think there's an upper limit to that because if you saw like an old man and he had like. Like a cravat and a monocle, and he's laughing maniacally eating a lobster. <laughs> it does, it does you're like, over no, there. he's having a great time actually. <laughs> he's, he's doing that guy's fine. got it figured out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, fucking, what have I got here? Bambi, I guess. I don't know why I put that in. Bambi's but, uh, the one. You know, yeah. Edward Scissorhands at the end. He has to. What does happen? In... Doesn't he get regular hands at the end? No, every he well, he... goes back does up. Does he? There. Get... Oh, I haven't seen that for so long. Does mm. he get regular hands? At the end? <laughs> They, no, because his father's like... Initially, he has regu- yeah. there's, his there's father some regular is, hands. His father's regular played hands on the by... Um, he's the great... Like, it, Vincent Price. <laughs> Vincent Price, yeah. Oh, right. And he's like, I've made you these regular hands. Yes. But then he has a heart attack and he never gets his regular hands. Right. And then he stays up in the, in the, in the house. Then they find him and then he's a monster and he goes back. And Winona Ryder's in the end is like, I think he's still up there. And he is. Yeah. Still Edward Scissorhand, and he hasn't aged. He's still up there because he's a robot or something. He was born with the scissor hands. No, I think he gave him the scissor hands because he was built. He's like a Frankenstein man, isn't he? It's, I don't. I can't. It's an analogy this is blowing my mind. Is it, it's Tim Burton being. Is it, this yeah. is me. That film is. This is me. Oh, absolutely, it is. Yeah, it's got the um, hair and everything. So Tim's up that hill. Yeah, he is, isn't he? And he's thinking Sweeney Todd. All of his characters <laughs> are just that. Like the way he pitches, he's like, I saw the penguin is like a little dude. I'm a penguin boy. Oh, I love that movie, but all these characters are just. <laughs> they really are. No one loves me weird. <laughs> and that's just him. That is just him. He went to fucking art school with like John Lasseter and yeah, like yeah. all these other like people who's, who's a piece of shit. But like, and he, he was just obviously the one in the corner going. That's, <laughs> that's how he pitched like two decades worth of movies. He just went into the Money Man in the meeting and he was just like, okay, but. <laughs> like, all right, okay. And like towards the, towards the tail end, he walks in and they just. They all like. They're like, yeah, Burr, we get it. Okay, <laughs> just, just do the thing. Hey, Burr, have you seen my little doodles? I've done it. How sad my little doodle characters are. What, what do you think the tipping point of that is? Where people are like. You're fine. You're worth like a hundred million dollars. <laughs> big can't fish. Be like, it must have been big fish. Big Which fish. is a yeah. father's connection. With his son. I don't like oh, that. Sad on to me, I'm it. like he's just lying, and he's making his son's life worse because he's telling these fantastical yeah. stories, and his son goes and parrots yeah. them, and they're like, "You're an idiot. You're a prick." Yeah. yeah. That's I, I yelled out at the end and said, "My dad's not a fish." <laughs> That's what I said when I saw it. <laughs> um, so I was not moved. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. Ah, uh, Titanic, you know, Horizon Jack and the door, and you've never seen it. I've not seen Titanic. You've yeah. never seen Titanic. I've never seen Titanic, no. It's, a, it's an investment of your time. Yeah, I remember, I remember I didn't see it at the cinema, and then it came out on two DVDs, and I'm like, or well, that DVD you had to turn over. I remember you yeah. had to turn over yeah. a DVD, and I'm like, 
It's not, not my bag, really. <laughs> nah. I had the uh, I had the pleasure. Zach and I had the pleasure of um, seeing that film in three D, <gasps> which is very funny to see a sad movie <laughs> in in the third dimension mm. because it's like they're just having dialogue scenes that are like you know like the drawing scene, but they're like popping out. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's so, it doesn't, it doesn't Tasteful work. Tasteful dimensioning. Tasteful yeah, dimensioning. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's what they should have called it. Because yeah. every scene 2D, is in 3D. Yeah. You no, know, the script every... says, nah, they're popping out. James Cameron was very clear. He was and like, they no, got, they'll be popping they'd out. they be popping. And they got to go boing, oing, oing. Yeah, I know, I get it. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, look, we could talk about this all day, but we can't because you guys have to do a different thing. You know what is fun? What's fun? Our show is happy. It is happy show that people can watch. <laughs> Right now on Netflix, everybody has Netflix and could watch it and leave it on for 12 months. One of us does die. Oh, no. Oh, what? It's, we do the Maud Flanders to keep people watching. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. yeah. yeah we, jumped the, we jumped the shark on episode four. It's like <laughs> it wasn't going well. So, Do you mind if I read out some a Patreon topic suggestions that people had? That we, oh, please. That we, questions. A lot, of, a lot of questions about how do you make Netflix, and we've got a separate thing for that. Yeah, yeah, People yeah. check out. Yeah. But Ryan Land said, uh, there's a video of uh, you guys performing for a group of children, and I have to know uh, why that gig happened. Bad oh. producers. Okay. We did a show at Melbourne Comedy <laughs> Festival, uh, uh-huh. Nick. Mm. Hello. Uh, <laughs> and um, and uh, we were told that you're going to be performing for 10 to 12-year-olds yep. and it's going to be full. Um, so don't don't talk down to the kids. Mm. Just do your show but take out the swear words. We got there. It was about 24-year-olds, 24-year-olds. Oh, no. And, um, and as I, it's online, Stand and Deliver Auntie Donna it's called. You go online, you see me walk out, you can see the fear in my eyes. <laughs> yeah. And then we also made the mistake. That's a whole other skill as well, yeah. like entertaining. Oh, I'll just say one thing. Do go watch it, but popcorn, that's all. I can't, I can't watch it. Uh, it's, so, it's so difficult it for me to watch. I, it's, it's difficult because um, we went out there with the assumption of one thing and then it turned into something different very quickly. Broden essentially saved the set because at one point he turns on them. Yeah, and, nice. when Broden, <laughs> and when Broden Finally, turns on them, four-year-olds have had it too good for too long. Yeah, as far then as Zach and I cotton on, and we all turn on them, and then it gets a little more. It's like okay, kids now, love that. But up yeah. until that point, we're just trying very hard to do a good job. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not, it's not where, and I hate watching that because I'm just watching. Yeah, well, I'm all I see in my face is a man drowning. Yeah, and it's very difficult <laughs> to watch. You, t- I remember I heard on a podcast you talked about how you bombed for really, really old people in. Oh. Edinburgh, maybe? Oh, you didn't know Dartmouth. what the crowd... Dartmouth. In Dartmouth. And afterwards right. they were like, that was, that was really that good. Was and you were really like, nice. you, know, you know they were just like, they I didn't uh, get it. And I couldn't leave the change room because yeah. I knew that some of the audience members were out there waiting for us. And I was struck by such anxiety because I was like, <laughs> that was the most full-on show. It was like a four-hour drive worst, out of London. Worst gig of our life. Yeah, wow. it was uh, next to Comedy in the Dark in Edinburgh. Yes. Which was also, <laughs> yes, okay. we got booed. <laughs> we got oh. booed. <laughs> we were billed at this Dartmouth show. We were poor management, poor booking. Mm. The not, show not, not poor with money, just very bad. Okay, sure, <laughs> very rich. Yeah. Monetarily. Um, yeah. Financially. Yeah. We, great, doing great. We showed up and the show was called Summer Comedy with Auntie Donna. Oh. And so it was, oh, we're lovely. Go see the show at oh, the no. local. It's fish- like this fishing town where like everyone's <laughs> yeah. just, go- it must be a place where people go to retire. And maybe and they're like- expecting Mrs. Brown's boys. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just, right. yeah, it's just like come, come for the yeah regular Sunday funny bits. And we could see people walking. We could see people going into the theatre from our change room and I, I, I saw, was 50% walking frames. Oh, no. And I was like, we are in very big trouble. <laughs> and that's what it was but for you just, But you just did it. You're like, we're fucking doing this. But oh, then, I laughed the whole show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we could barely get through the opening song because we were just like, this is so funny. Because the other thing that happened was four, like, 20-year-old fans had caught a bus from oh, like, wow. London or so somewhere. So they're just, like, in their element. And they were front row. Yeah. But they were just also aware of... Like, not only were they watching and enjoying the show, but they were also aware of how we were reacting to the crowd we were playing. Mm. They were seeing two shows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. So I'll just quickly run through these. Please, yes, sorry. Uh, Robbie Mann says, top three cr- creative influences and why they all Red Dwarf. They don't have to be that. but like, Red, oh, the Red Dwarf's a running thing, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. It definitely is. <laughs> <laughs> I've I'm never from, seen Red Dwarf. That's the thing you say now in, um, what are we reading, was it? Watchmen? No. Well, Westworld. Westworld. <laughs> Goddamn Westworld. <laughs> 
Do you guys have like uh, Flight of Concords you guys mentioned in this or another three, thing? Uh, yeah. Mark says Tim and Eric. I mm-hmm. say Conan O'Brien. Zach says Sean McAuliffe and they're the rules. But also Simpsons and South Park. Yeah, and yeah. Seinfeld and yeah. Sad Dog yeah. episode. And yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. Cool. Rogan. Yeah, he's yeah, huge Rogan. on Rogan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> love it. Nice, nice. Dave Crozier says, uh, what would three seasons of their Netflix show look like? Do you know? Like, Do you have an idea? We just get more and more confident, I think. Mm. Yeah. And, yeah. More, and more buff because you're supposed to, yeah, that's the supposed to get yeah. real, real strong. All we do are always yeah. sunny and we all get really big, cultivate some mass. Too. Yeah, like uh, I, think it would, I think it would be similar to what we're doing now but it, w- it would probably get – a little more in jokey for the audience, or like you know, yeah. more callbacks and and more and more ambitious ideas. I would potentially. say season one of Always Sunny to season two of three of Always Sunny would be my hope. Like where that show mm. seems very firm and set, but then it really takes off into like I would love for that to be the case. Yeah, that'd yeah, be cool. Yeah, yeah, and a, and a new established like celebrity cast member. Yeah, Danny DeVito. <laughs> no, just, Danny DeVito. just Danny DeVito. Just Danny DeVito. Would, okay, cool. would you be open to that to be like you got to bring in? Some, I don't know, I can't yes. someone. Yeah? <laughs> yes. Yeah, Because sure. I know they were reluctant because they were like, like if they were like, Billy Crystal's your dad or something. Yeah, I would <laughs> love that. Billy Crystal's all your dad, yes. <laughs> I won't go into it, but you'd be surprised at the amount of people we asked to be in this show who said no, and I'm definitely going back for season two and asking them again. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. I want to hear those we'll names, We'll be on Big after. Sandwich, maybe. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Thomas Mitchell said, uh, do you know that Jack Quaid was Dennis Quaid's son? Did you know that? And yeah. Because you know him. He, he somehow, he came to a show of ours, and he's just a big Nerd fan, yeah. Jack. Big dog um, fan. Yeah, and, and a fan of you guys as well, is No, it? we make that up. We don't think he knows who we are. <laughs> no, we <don't> <laughs> we just say it because he knows who you are. Well, he, he, has a, he has a sketch group as well called the Sasquatch. And, uh, yeah, they were just like they, – they were just doing internet sketches as well and, ah. and they all happened across us. He's and, just a lovely, lovely – Nerd, yeah, yeah, and, nice um, guy. It's crazy. Like, Meg Ryan's your mum. I know, right? Weird. Yeah, yeah. But he knows. Doesn't he's he? in he's in our show as well at yes. a point, and um, yeah, he's just the nicest guy. Mm. Jessica Lazoya said, uh, "Their favorite movie or TV show during the pandemic? What's something that's keeping you alive? For me. Watchmen. I yeah. didn't have the chance to watch it until mm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched that when it was coming out, and it mm. was just yeah. oh my god, it was so good. Um, uh, the boys, I, I loved, mm. I loved season two of the boys. I thought it was fucking fantastic. Mason, you as well." Yeah, I love all those things. Okay, cool. Yeah. Do you have a different answer though? No. Okay, that's no. fine. Uh, this one is also for Mark. Uh, so Justin Murphy says, discuss why Naomi is a better gamer than Mark. <laughs> <laughs> she's smarter. Okay, so that's what it she's comes She's smarter to. and she's better at everything than me. Dexterity? Dexterity and just that. But this may, uh, but I don't know if he's aware, but I won a crown in full, guys. So, uh, Did oh, you? Oh, wow. Yeah, it was a whole thing. <laughs> I haven't won one yet. <laughs> oh, my up. God. Yeah. Oh, my God. It took so long. It took so long. Did you run to the top of the hill and make the jump? That's the one that I ended up winning, yeah. It's always like a guy who was like, why is he that fast? I know, I know. And (laughs) I just got so good. I got so incredibly good at every single game except for like the four that you play at the end. Because you can't do them again and again. Exactly, because you don't do them as much. Mm. And uh, I I just, I ended up just getting lucky. I ended up getting so lucky with the four. It's like everyone else fucked up and I managed to get there (laughs) first. It's a whole thing. It's like a Netflix show. Was it like... God, you, you started up in like first game and you won the crown. Or was it like a 10-hour session of like... I did it over 10 streams and I think I clocked up around about 45 to 50 hours on the game before I could, before I could beat it. <laughs> and it you was, quit? And then as soon as I won the crown on stream, I then uninstalled the game immediately. <laughs> yeah, good call. I will yeah. never play that game yeah. again. Yeah. I will yeah. never play That's that game That's what I was again. going to do and then I just... I'm just old. And I, and I, just can't, I don't have the time. And, Brody, I have a specific question for you. Uh, Conker and Paul Leslie say, ask Broden about airplanes and Broden's top aeroplanes. Because yes, I was on Do Go On. Yes. Uh, with the, uh, and I talked about planes. Extensively. Um, that's what my YouTube algorithm has decided. Is all I want to hear is cockpit recordings of planes crashing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not a strong enough man to not click on that, yeah. even though Social Dilemma told me not to. Um, so I'm just a line. Uh, there's some great planes out there. <laughs> sure. Um, there's some good planes. You have like a Cessna. You're liking something a little bit bigger. I, I'm obsessed with commercial airlines yeah, and okay. the way that they handle their businesses and stuff like that. So now would be super interesting yeah, for the re- you, right? Relationship with Qatar and Australia and yeah, what that's right. doing for their business in relation to which which of the major airlines do you think will survive the pandemic? Uh, em- Emirates. Mm-hmm. Emirates uh, is probably best poised and all the other ones are going to do badly. The main thing that they're scared about is, and we've experienced mm. it personally, but we all know 
how much we don't need to fly now. Yeah. We did a podcast yeah. two weeks ago with Ed Helms where we would have flown. It's really funny. To, yeah. yeah, we would have flown to America to do it because, you know, to have his, you know, have him on the podcast, you know. You get a photo. We literally called him and did it and it was done and no one cared that it was a Zoom. Because like, <laughs> yeah. like, you guys were like the quality, the audio quality is bad. You said that up top. Yeah. It was fine. Yeah. 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 It didn't um, matter. To, so like I think every industry in the world – knows this mm. now that yeah. you don't need to fly places as much. You don't need to go to the office. As much as you do, yeah. yeah it's yeah. so great. My brother is just like, got to take trams though. Got to. Uh, oh, trams very important. You need, need to take. No, you need to take. No, you need, everybody needs to take trams every day, every no. day. Like, <laughs> like, yep, no. No, no, no. Because no, no, they're no. not even in every major city. <laughs> They should be. Yeah, I, think, I think if you put a couple of trams in every major city, people will be like, oh, I'm digging this. This is good. So they're scared about how long they're grounded for. They're genuinely worried about that, but they're more worried about that is people get it now. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, you don't have to fly to Sydney every weekend to do a Monday. You could take a tram to Sydney. We've got this. Well, no, no, you, no, you could, no, you could take a big fun. tram. That's yeah, a train. You, yeah. yeah, yeah you, that you, could well, fly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, how much no. work would you have to do, Nick, to learn how to fly a plane? Is it like, like me personally? <laughs> What's the difference? Like you, you you've like, got trams down, yeah. yeah. But now you're moving on to uh, aeronautical. Yeah, yeah. Type, and you got to remember, there's different dimensions to flight. I was going to say, I'd have to, add, I'd have no to add no tracks. I'd have to add at least. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to add at least three additional axes to my <laughs> yeah, right, right, to right. My movement controls, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, or if not the fourth axis of time, yeah. I'd have to add that as well. Um, because how do you when you're landing a tram? Yeah, is that similar? <laughs> do they does that work similar to landing a plane? Do you think? I mean, it's it's tough. Go- I mean, the hardest part of landing a tram and a plane is well, the, the hardest part is landing. Like yeah, right, right, can, right. You know, yeah, take yeah, yeah. off in if a tram. It, yeah. or a if plane. a tram leaves the earth, yes, yes, and yes, go on. Landing it would be horrible because a tram's not supposed to leave the earth. Is that true? I mean. They could like put up like a temporary, like what we call a temporary crossover, and they mm. could like tilt it vertically. I imagine, mm, mm. like to like a forty-five degree angle. I could probably land it on that. All right, professor. <laughs> <laughs> um, could you take how much work would it require for you to drive a monorail? I reckon I could do a monorail. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I yeah. think the because issue because yes, we've got. <laughs> <laughs> I was it outside? Here yeah. we go. No, that's the end of my joke. I loved it. I love it. was a good joke. Yeah. <laughs> and I think leave, ending on that good joke is a good jo- <laughs> good place to end on this. Thank, thank you for you. coming in. Thank you. Oh, thank really you. Appreciate I really appreciate so all your support. Delight. I know you're doing a ton of these, so and you've recorded a bunch of stuff with us, which we really appreciate, don't we, Mason? Both yeah. of us appreciate it. And I, I appreciate list, it more. People have been uh, – oh, do you? Yeah. <laughs> but people have been asking for you guys to come on. So oh, and we got Aww. we got some of you. So that's good. <laughs> well, yeah. you're about to speak to the wacky two now. We call yeah. it the wacky two. Yeah, yeah. Can't wait. That's going to be better too, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Go. It'll hey, be better. excited. Great. It'll be different. All right. Do you know what it's time for, Mason? No, because I don't know when you're putting this segment. Oh, this in. will be a bit, a bit of the what we're reading. Will be the da, next da, segment. Da, da. Also, that's time yeah. for what we're reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 what are we reading Westworld. today? <laughs> We're in the what we're reading segment. That's aren't we, right. Mason? Yeah. Have you read Trey Jokers? Yeah, I finished Trey Jokers. We can read. We can talk about Trey Jokers. Trio of trio of Jokers. Trio of Joker boys. Some some hot some hot bread and a trio, a trio of Jokers. That's right. You know what I mean? Uh, do you want to? We'll just. What did you think? Just briefly, and then spoilers. I thought it was fine. I also thought it was fine. It wasn't. It wasn't the the mind bending finale that I thought it was going was going to be. Remember when you found the button? Was that related to the Joker? No, no that was a different event. A different Remember year. when he sat in that big chair and the chair was like, there's three Jokers. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Remember and, that? And he's like, it's blown my mind. I yeah. thought there was only Uno Joker. <laughs> Uno Joker? Why didn't he, why wasn't he follow-up questions on that chair? Good question. Why doesn't the chair allow follow-up questions? Maybe it does. He just didn't, <laughs> oh, think of the world's greatest detective, Batman. <laughs> you idiot. What an idiot. Yeah. So yeah, I also thought it was, and so this is, but this is pretty okay. It's fine, but this this is also DC Black Label, which is technically another. It's a different universe okay. to the regular DC. Okay, universe. okay. So if they want to show dicks, yeah, that. But also <laughs> if they, as we mentioned in the, in yeah, the yeah. Uh, episode, uh, but if they want to then say, well, the the reason for there being three Jokers in the regular DC universe is different, mm. then I guess they could, depending on how this is. Uh, how this is received, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. But spoilers for this, I guess. But that's the thing. Like it was, I feel it was something of an anticlimax. So the, yeah. the reveal basically was there. There was one Joker originally, and then he created two more Jokers, and then they're like, 
Well, us three jokes. We're, we're One's not, the real one. We're not good enough jokers to really challenge Batman. We should create an ultimate joker. And so they just jokerized a bunch of people and it didn't work. And then and they're tried like, to get um, Joe Chill, Joe the, Chill. The, the, the man who killed Batman's parents, and like, we'll jokerize him and then he'll be the ultimate joker because he'll jokerize Batman so good. <laughs> I'll give him all the best jokes. He'll kill him. And without... doesn't Batman realize that we need each other or something? Yeah. You know, it's that thing that, yeah, he, yeah, that speech yeah. he does. I guess I don't know where, what I expected, like what mind-blowing revelation I expected out of this yeah. comic, but I didn't get it. So. I think I think it. Um, it's very much status quo at the end as well, yeah. which we suspected might have been the case. Oh, there's more jokers out there, whatever. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there's no definitive like... I think it would have been more more interesting to at least leave it like maybe it was eight guys. Right, yeah. Because okay. he is different. Like yes. every time he shows up, depending on the artist and the era and whatever, he's different. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. the same as Batman is different, which yeah. means maybe there's – maybe we're going to get three Batmans. <gasps> trio of Batmans. Trio of Batmans, yeah. yeah who, would be, who would make the ultimate Batman against the Joker? Who does the Joker hate? A big vat of poison? <laughs> Yep. Just in a big yep. bat cow. Um, just a guy on the internet who's like, oh, I'm not funny actually. <laughs> no, no. I liked your earlier stuff better, but yeah. I think, you know. A bit on the nose. Bit politi- you've gone a bit political oh, yeah, here, we actually. Yeah, don't, we don't like that, do we? Yeah. A bit political this week, wasn't it? It was a little bit political. The whole, the whole, whole world got a bit political, didn't it? <laughs> it did. It certainly did. I say keep the politics out of my world, <laughs> out of my planet Earth. If you wouldn't, I agree if you with you. If you absolutely wouldn't mind. I'm sick to death of people talking about politics. But I'm just trying to scroll Twitter endlessly. Oh my god! Until I die, <laughs> that'd be great. Um, That's it. Yeah, th- three jokes. Um, th- I th- there was some rumors this week. Speaking of comic books, okay. there were some rumors this week that DC are planning just on dumping their shared continuity, just generally. What does that mean? Like what they're just going to be like, you're gonna if you want to pick up an issue of Batman, it's Batman. He's going to be fighting some guys and solving some crimes, but it's not connected to anything else. It's like it's going to be like the movies. Okay, that's the rumor anyway, and it's because. DC was going to do they were they they have one event happening currently and they were going to like lead it into an event soon where we go into the future of the DC universe and they were going to be connected but now oh, they were going to do future state it was going to Yeah be yeah and but now it... then but now it's not connected anymore they're like these two things are no longer connected and people are like well that means the whole multiverse is doomed Wasn't or whatever Wasn't there 5G as well It was going to be 5G 5G they got rid of yeah, that that was that was in the the great big firing they, where they fired everybody or restructured yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah, it's it's, yeah. A, it's a real it's a real nightmare over there. I exactly. think exactly. So yeah, there you bloody go, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just looking if there's more news. I feel like we were news light this week. That's right. We can put it. Well, have you been reading or watching anything else? Yeah, man. Go, uh, but go I'm on. talking about Insuggestible, my other podcast. Oh my god! I'm talking about Queen's Gambit this week. I don't know what that is. It's about chess and taking drugs. Oh, and it's a lady who's a chess prodigy. Yeah, I really okay, like it. Right. Have you seen any episodes of Truth Seekers? What's? Oh no, I, we've been recommended it. I watched the first couple of episodes. I enjoy it. I've heard mi- very mixed things. Okay. Like, people I know, admit. People I know on Twitter who are like, "This isn't very good," and I'm like, "I don't trust your judgment." Oh, but I quite enjoyed it. It's good. It's um, so it's Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, yes, who wrote it and are both in it. Although Nick Frost is sort of the default main character, and Simon Pegg is sort of an offsider, yeah, with a terrible wig on because he's doing um movies. I would say that's probably it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, it's it's pretty good. It's like uh, it, uh, if you've seen the trailers, it's Nick Frost as a like a TV cable installer who also mm. uh has a, a YouTube channel where he investigates spooky things that aren't particularly spooky, but this time maybe he's bitten off more than he can chew because of actual spooky things. I do love spooky stuff, yeah. but also like low-key, low-budget, real spooky stuff. It's like um, I, I went down a rabbit hole of, um, I think we talked about this, the Haunted Bookstore in Melbourne, oh, yes. which uh-huh. closed last year actually pre-pandemic. Mm-hmm. The guy who runs it looks like Professor Snape and he's yes. all like tarot cards and shit. And I'm like, I don't believe in any of this, but I will sit and watch a video. Yeah, if somebody sure. earnestly gets into like tarot cards and reading people and whatever and the ghosts yes. and shit. Yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah, I'm there. Yeah. But uh, the other thing I want to watch, which is just out, um, Moonbase 8. That. That's um. It stars Fred Armiston, Tim Heidecker, and John C. Riley, and it's three astronauts in the desert doing a training exercise, but they all seem to turn on each other or something. Huh. It's on. It's, Stan. it's live action. Yes. Huh. There you go. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's Showtime overseas, but um, yeah. yeah, I haven't read any reviews of it, but I think it just came out the day of recording this. So it's Fred Armiston. Yeah. John C. Riley. Tim Heidecker. That's a that's a that's an all star. That's an all star bumper cast. It is. It's an I've been watching too much Auntie Donna, mate. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, you yeah. can tell. From yeah, that's a. Uh, that's an all-star cast of, you know, character actors and yeah. weirdos and, yeah. And I know we just talked about 
the Auntie Donna show. Yes. Um, I hadn't seen it at the time of recording that. Yes. But I watched it really quickly. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just in between. Um, right, right. I ran to the other room and oh, I yes. watched all six episodes. Uh-huh. I fucking loved it. Right. Like it was so funny. Yeah, and yeah. I think I really I think people really like it. I hope. I mean, if you like their stuff, you'll like it. Yeah. Uh-huh. If there's, I, if I would, if a recommendation would be, I watched them like four and then two. I wish I spaced it out because right. it's so. First of all, it's so like joke dense. Yeah, yeah. That right. it's like. You just shouldn't watch them in a row. And also now I, I can't, like, I'll go right. back and watch yeah, them again. Yeah. But now I, I the, have, the, I've the watched The surprise them. is gone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it goes just so many directions and fourth wall breaking and fun yeah. guest stars and the characters that they do. And there's a South African skit, which I'll, I think I'll show you what after this. Oh. They're doing South African accents, so which is one of your favourites. I think Auntie Donna's, uh, for some people that I've shown Auntie Donna to, it, they're initially it's like, I don't know if I'll like this. And then like two days later, they're like, I've watched everything I've ever done. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So I yeah. think it'll probably be like that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I also, uh, mm. I started watching this. I've, I've discovered a new show that I'm to watch when I'm not watching a show. Oh, uh, it's uh, Magnum PI, the remake, the reboot series. Oh, that's got um, El Diablo guy in it, isn't it? I don't know who that is. The guy who played El Diablo in Jay Hernandez? Suicide Squad. Yeah. Is that him? I think so. There you go. I might be wrong. I'm going to yeah. look it up. You didn't recognize him because he was painted in skulls. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, bu- 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 he is. Yep, that's yeah. right. I like you him. Know, it's a fun. It's a fun show. It's like it's very. I, I know when I was a kid, I really liked. I wanted to be a detective or a or a PI because of old Magnum PI. Yeah, and it's uh, it's pretty fun. Exactly. Kind of dumb, but you know, that's it's it's very much is, in the style of. Does it feel like that? Um, like that Hawaii Five O kind of it's in the same universe. What? There's, there's a guest. There's a crossover. One of the detectives from Hawaii Five O is in the first episode, James. It's in the same. First of all, let me just say what, as in Hawaii Five O, is still on. Uh, I don't know. But see, the thing is with Magnum is that I, it's, I thought that they'd released a, they'd made a pilot Not like finished. a couple of years Maple. ago, and it never got picked up. Oh yeah, but it, it's been going for two years. Like that Lethal Weapon series. <laughs> That's that right. They got rid of Riggs, but it's maybe still going. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But uh, and it's also in the same universe as the MacGyver reboot. Oh, that! Oh, that's bad. In Except the t- the difference here is in the MacGyver reboot. You know how everybody loved MacGyver. Yeah. They're like, oh my god, every every character is like, oh, I'm in love with MacGyver. He's the best, and he's so skilled. Mm. In this, everybody's like, Magnum, why do you suck so bad? He's such a weird <laughs> moocher. What do you hang out in this guy's house? Get a real job. You son of a bitch. Does he have a cool Ferrari or whatever Magnum's supposed to drive? Yeah. Is it from the eighties though? Well, here's the thing. I think they've in the first episode he does drive the old. Ferrari from the original series, yeah. uh, but it does get hit by a truck and then it falls down a cliff and then it explodes. And now he just drives a regular Ferrari. So just a regular. Did he I have mean, a good insurance payout? Did he? No, they're, well, they're not. They're not his Ferraris. If you've, he, I don't know anything about making okay. payout. So he's a he's he he's a private investigator. Yep. But also he's a security consultant for this really rich author in Hawaii. So he lives on the guy's property. Mm. And he also uses all the rich guy's stuff. Because he's never around. Oh, okay. So he uses all his Ferraris and stuff. And, and, so, that's and the, destroys them. And that's the Tom Salick guy. Yes, but also this guy. Also this guy. Same same premise. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. All right. So don't watch MacGyver is what you're saying. Don't you watch MacGyver. MacGyver. Watch Magnum. It's pretty fun. I did. I watched the pilot yeah. and I hated it. MacGyver? Yeah. Because I made you watch it. I remember. You made me watch it. it was, I was so mad. <laughs> and I was so mad because... He was so thoroughly unprepared. Yes. Like he's just like, I'll probably find a storeroom filled with batteries and wires. Just like bring a, anything. Yeah, bring... just a, it, literally anything. Yeah. And he was so thoroughly unprepared to be likable also. But everybody <laughs> said he was likable. But, yeah, this version of, of Magnum, it's got, he's got the same two sidekicks. I think he had a pocket knife or whatever. Yeah, he had, one, yeah. Yeah, he had one pocket. He's got, the same, he's got the same sidekicks. I think some of the storylines are kind of the same. He's got the same, like, odd couple sidekick who doesn't like him but – they eventually become, you know, they get better at working together. Sure. Except this time, it's a lady. What? Not a man. Excuse me. Yeah, that's right. You might have uh, hit your head during that show. <laughs> no, no. I, I maintain I have not hit my head. <laughs> my goodness. It's pretty, it's pretty progressive, let that's me tell wild. you. That's wild. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's kind of fun and dumb. And they're driving around in uh, in Hawaii with... Um, oh, and at one point, he um, there's a flashback where he... Uh, considers having the mustache, but then he's like, nah, and he shaves it off. So Very good. Know. Okay, quick follow-up question, last yes. question. Yes. Is the original Hawaii Five-0 in the same universe as the original Magnum PI universe? No. I don't know. I'm learning a lot. Yeah. Well, the original, <laughs> Hawaii, about original the shows Hawaii Five-0 watch. was in the 60s, I think. Oh, okay, yeah, right. So, I mean, maybe. Oh, yeah, because it's got that swing in 60s yeah, Zephyr yeah, yeah. tune. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. Okay, there you <laughs> That's go. That's right. I remember watching the first episode of that when it came out in 2010 and being like, all right. And then I like didn't watch it sure, again. Yeah. But uh-huh. I was like, this is all right. 
That's the, I think it's that, got some of the people from Lost because it's in Hawaii. The, that's the perfect. That's the perfect. You know, combo of and and that's a, that's the problem with a show you to watch when you're not watching a show is they just speed by because you're doing everything else. Yeah, exactly. You're like doing the washing up or like the laundry or whatever. It's and you're the burn also, notice effect. Yeah, I tried to find that on like streaming this week. I couldn't find it. Are we going to do our burn notice episode on Big know. Sandwich? But again, find all my old DVDs of it. Probably well, not. We're going to have to do. <laughs> we're going to have to do anything. Yes. We're going to have to do an episode of um uh, of our of our regular show. We got we got this covered covered. So that'll be up by the time now. If you want to sign up at bigsandwich.co. Nice. And next week will be a comic book thing, but we don't know what it is yet because we definitely haven't thought about it enough. But it will be there. Yeah, I think I haven't we talked about. Oh yeah, it? we have talked about it. Yeah. Well, should we talk to tell people yeah. what it is? Yeah. Well, and, and, unless people have any objections, because last time we did the extraordinarily long and complicated Crisis on Infinite Earths for DC, James is narrowing his eyes in disgust <laughs> and dismay and anger at me because he was forced to read two two issues of that or something. It was so dense, Mason. It was like reading one hundred Bibles. It was <laughs> fucking crazy. It really is right. <laughs> It really is. I, that is the perfect metaphor you hit upon there. <laughs> that is very true. Um, so this time around we're going to do the Marvel version, which came out basically the same time yeah. in the 80s, which was the original Secret Wars. You've seen the page where he's in the black suit. And he's yeah. like, what's going on? I think we already we we've really done the cover did, we did. for that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. We, that's covered, <laughs> obviously. That's right. Uh, but I, I, the only issue I think I've ever read of that, mm. and it's 12 issues like the other one, but it was the one where Spider-Man does get his black suit. So I'm excited to read that. I suspect it is significantly less dense than Crisis on Infinite Earths because it's just people punching each other. Great, I think. Yeah. We'll see. I Pretty bet it's good. bad for different reasons. Yeah, we'll find out, though. I'm excited for you to find out. I'm excited for you to shut up. I know, but I won't. <laughs> I never will. Well, we have to record it. So That's yeah, true, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. yeah, let's do that. What's the next segment of the show? The next segment is the letters segment. It's my favourite segment. Uh, before we do letters, you have to Wait, do no, letters. wrong thing. What have you done, Mason? I don't know. You've broken the flow oh, of the no, show. Yep, no, okay, no, no, no. We, we get the flow back. Mm. Don't panic, James. You've got that panic look in your eyes. Here we go. Classic one was letters, oh letters, we love you, some letters, they're only a take my way. I know they're here right now, we're going to do letters. <laughs> hey man, letters. Yeah, letters are good, right? If you do want to reach the show, hashtag Pod. that's where I sit, lonely on Twitter, waiting for the tweets to roll in. Uh-huh. Or you can send an abundance of emails to Mason. Oh my God, just a king's ransom of emails. Gmail, uh, weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. Don't you agree, Mason? I absolutely do, yeah. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go I first? I've got a whole bunch of letters here. Okay, this is from uh, this is from 2K Broam. Hello. She says, I lied to a friend for you. Good. Uh, hey, Mr. Sunday Moso Movies. I've been listening since you guys had one mic, had terrible audio quality, and would sing before each episode. I mean, we still sing before each episode, but it's before we turn the microphones yeah, 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 on. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because the, the, you know, the, the record labels came at us for such perfect renditions of songs. That's right. We, and- we, we do. It's we mostly just do walk like a man. We do that every week. Oh yeah. Sometimes one. we do it with more, but it's mostly walk like a man. Yeah, they're two classics. <laughs> you know. Uh, mm. So uh, uh, he says, uh, "I've been uh, my best bud is the biggest Pink Floyd fan in the world. He even named his son Floyd. I've been trying to get him to listen to the pod for years, and he reluctantly gave you guys a chance when I told him the co-host was not none other than Nick Mason, the one and only drummer of the legendary rock <laughs> band Pink Floyd." He very, very quickly saw through our deception, but he has stayed a listener, so we got him. Got him. Thanks for all the content. Beej from Michigan. Uh, P.S. Can I be the stereotypical Filipino male nurse of the pod? Yes, you can. Is that, is that a stereotype? I think so. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? That old chestnut. That's you see right. it in movies often. You do. That's right. Maybe in Miami. See maybe, Miami, in, maybe, in, uh, maybe in a Bad Boys. He'll be there. He's like in Bad Boys. He's a big, he's a big no-nonsense nurse, you know? <laughs> That's right. And they're like, you, a nurse? And he's like, I'm a nurse. Yeah, I'm a nurse, come on. We're allowed to be nurses. <laughs> Thank you for tricking somebody. Um, I mean, they could have just said that your parents were big fans of Pink Floyd and we're big fans. Uh, but I like the commitment to that obvious lie. I think so too. Appreciate it. You'd be like, so... He'd be like, so the drummer from Pink Floyd, a band that I love and know everything about, <laughs> has committed to... Almost 400 episodes of a, of a <laughs> podcast about stuff that he has nothing to do with. That's with fascinating. terrible audio quality. Yeah. <laughs> Which why is odd he, for a band. Why did, he, why did he start with one microphone? <laughs> no, no. You got him. doesn't matter. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I've got a tweet here from Dylan Hutton says, Hey, boys. Oh, hey. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. What excites you more, a potential Spider-Verse movie or a Bat-Verse movie uh, happening in the Flash film? Let me know or don't. Thanks. That's Dylan from Wellington. 
At this point, probably Batverse, but I yeah. could go back and forth. It's, it's only because we have seen a Spider-Verse movie. Yes. And that is has been good it's a very fun. good movie. But I mean, they and they did, but that's the thing. Like Spider-Man has started filming. I don't know if you saw, but they're... Oh, yeah. They saw the, the first, maybe a stunt double shot. Atlanta. Yeah. Spider-Man's um, wearing a mask and a mask. It's crazy stuff. It's yeah. crazy stuff. Mm. Um, but I mean, you know, we saw, you know, so many wild alternate Spider-Man and all that sort of stuff. I'm like, that's a lot of fun. Mm. But you know the 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 thr- and the thrill will return in for yeah. a sequel, I assume. But you know the thrill is kind of like it's waned a little bit. But the difference here is the thrill is of seeing Spider Man that you know. It's not like who can we bring in is insane. It's like who's different. I mean, no, who knows different? What do we love? And yes, that back, uh-huh. you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I think I also when we did a video on, I talked about how is it too soon? And like if you look at the number of years, mm-hmm. it's not too soon. Like, it's been five, six years since he was cast, the first yeah, Spider-Man. Right. Uh-huh. Tobey Maguire finished in 2007. Do you know what I mean? So oh, we're talking oh, – sorry. I, so I'm I, talking the live-action one. I thought we were yeah. talking about a Spider-Verse sequel. Oh, no, oh really? Talking, yeah. Oh, Just, he says a potential live-action Spider-Verse. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. We're, we're talking about different things. We're talking about different things. Uh, um, mm. In that case, what? Mm. I would still see a Spider-Verse sequel over either, any of, the, either of those. So. Oh, yeah, that's – well, that, that's – I mean, that's uh, – yeah. It's a good movie. You know, well, that's, that's the but thing. But you love Batman. You love Michael Keaton's Batman. Yeah, I know I do love Michael Keaton Batman. But, but I you mean, hate Ezra Miller. So what do you do, Mason? Right? But also I think, <laughs> yeah, because – but also it's meant to be a Flash movie. It's not going to be exclusively Batman's teaming no, up. No, it? it's going to be all sorts of dimensional And I feel like the, the various Spider-Mans are thematically different enough or like their, their demeanors are different enough that that would be a good fun contrast if they all team up. Yeah, right. Whereas Batman just mostly angsty. Yeah. So yeah, maybe it is Spider-Man. I think it's Michael Keaton will inject a bit of fun in it, though, won't he? Yeah. Because when he does get to be Batman in those movies and yeah. Bruce Wayne, you see he's got a he's got a bloody spark in yeah, him, mate. Yeah, yeah. There'll be a let's get nuts joke for sure. Mm, no, there will be. Flash will maybe be eating some nuts. Yeah, he's yeah. like, where did you get those? And he goes, I oh, let's get nuts. There'll be a like, let, oh, let's there'll get be a let's get brunched joke. Oh, please. Yeah. And then he has to because he's figured out what brunch is. He's figuring it out. He's figuring it out. Okay, well, unless that's no longer. How did they put? I know we talked. Unless about it's it. no longer in continuity because of the of uh, the Snyder version doesn't have that in it. But so like, that's like, who? What? Do you not know what brunch is? Like, what do you mean? It's it'd be like going vegetarians. It's like you you <laughs> don't get that at this point. Yeah, you don't know what that is. Mm. Maybe he calls it Lekfest. He might be. Yeah, one of those guys. Yeah, Very yeah. funny. Mm. Um, what, uh, what very else? big bang theory. Isn't it just, what, yes. have, what have you got on the next thing? Uh, let's see. Uh, this is from Audrey. Uh, she says, uh, dear James and Maso, I started listening to the pod every night to fall asleep about two and a half years ago. Since then, everyone <laughs> who knows me well knows you as my Australians. Yeah. Who knew an Australian accent was so soothing? Not me. Or boring. That's, that's my, that's editorial. probably my it bad as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, a few uh, weeks ago, I showed my friend Olivia one of the inside jokes, things I mumble from the podcast, and now we greet each other with Vegas, baby. <laughs> I think we took that from Entourage. No, I think we then. invented that. We invented it and then Entourage stole it from us. Oh, okay, cool. Um, oh, you know what I was thinking the other day? I'm sorry to cut. No, I'll tell you after the letter. Yes. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, this week has been a whirlwind as I'm in the US, election nightmare, little sleep, another lockdown approaching, but I did get a job finally after graduating six months ago and it only fits that the woman in my training video was Australian. Yeah. Thanks for helping me get the sleep. And I I'm And I fell swimming. asleep instantly and was fired. <laughs> that's right. You had yeah. a good run though, didn't yeah, you? That's you know? right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, it's just a, if you can get that job, you can get any job it's a Pavlovian in this economy. Response, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's right, exactly. What I was going to say, bring up. Thank you. That's very Australian. Audrey. A Pavlovian response is very Australian. Thank you. Isn't when it, somebody says, or New Zealand, we'll get New Zealand yeah. to saying that they oh, invented yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. Maybe yeah. they did. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, but man. it's ours. Like Sam Neil, he's ours. <laughs> That's right. uh, but I was thinking the other day that was like, fuck, I want another Entourage movie. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I want to make fun of Entourage again, right. Mason. Yeah, I know. Can't I just? Okay, but I would even watch an Entourage movie that's on Zoom. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Anything. Yeah, right. Let's, what's Vinny Chase doing? Yeah, yeah. They're in lockdown together in a mansion. I don't care. Uh, yeah, Whatever. They yeah. They've got Ducatis and they're turtles. <laughs> I don't know. Right. They're all Billy. I don't know. They've got Ducatis. Don't... They've got Bacardi. They've got <laughs> yeah, whatever right. they want, you know? And I reckon probably Johnny Drama, he's got he's got the Rona. <laughs> yeah, he's got the Rona. And they've put him in a bubble. They've put he's in the garage. Yeah, yeah. They've sealed off the garage with plastic wrap. And he's like, hey guys, won't you let me in the mansion? And they're like, no, Johnny Drama. You got the Rona. But then at the end, yes. Turtle also has the Rona. Whoa. <laughs> That's how it goes, wow, wouldn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. Johnny probably got it because he went to meet a girl or whatever or something, wouldn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. yeah, he's a real sleaze and they all are. 
You know what I mean, though? Just give me another that entourage. Was, I mean, I know was, it didn't make money and everyone hated it, but just give me another one. Did it not one. make any money? It didn't make the money. That, back, no. that is the... An entourage <laughs> movie would be the balm that this nation and this world needs, James. Just a soothing, soothing balm yeah, can you on, on our, on our, on our source Let me box, check. you know? That would bring the world together. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because hmm. I don't want to go back and watch Entourage. No, I mean, that's, yeah. 33% Rotten Tomatoes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it needs to be bigger at this point. Like, watching some old episode of episodes of Entourage, it'd be fine. Je- Jerry Ferrara said, last year said sequel. He's Turtle, happening. right? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> it could be any of them. It's true. No, he couldn't be E. <laughs> no, he, couldn't. E is definitely not a Jerry Ferrara. That's true. I'm just looking for a can- I can- Oh, man, come on. I feel like in this age of streaming, yeah. if Dexter's coming back. That's true. The, the Entourage boys could, couldn't they? Anyway. And they have to be more famous than ever, inexplicably. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> They're the richest men in Hollywood all of a sudden. That's right, you know? yeah. Oh, I love how they position him as like this DiCaprio type. Yeah. <laughs> it's good stuff. It is, isn't it? Anyway, I got another email. I'm here. ready. A tweet, sorry. Uh, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. It's from Dylan, another Dylan. Says, um, at 1.15 of the Lego Star Wars Holiday Special. So you may have seen this trailer. It's a time-travelling romp. Yeah. A new Star Wars Holiday Special. Ray is taking all sorts of adventures through time with Darth Vader and meeting uh-huh. Luke Skywalker and whatever. Yes. It, says, uh, it shows that people pr- pr- proves in the Star Wars universe can read. So I think we see the Emperor reading something off a Yeah, it's tablet. a world's, world, world's best Emperor something like or something. That, yeah. But, mugs. But. Yes. They, these are clearly non-canonical. That's very so true, I, isn't it? Maybe in the Lego universe they can read. Yeah, but that's in true. the reg, the Lego Star Wars universe, well, they have to read the instructions. That's right. To exactly. Put together the Lego stuff. I'm just gonna let the dog in. Nice. Uh, excuse me for one moment, oh, folks. Excuse me, hello, hello. Hello, dog. Hello, hello. <laughs> oh, I don't think my dog likes anyone as much as she likes you. <laughs> <laughs> I feed her drugs. <laughs> Off you go. She's gone again. She's gone. She's out. <laughs> that was quick. Uh, yeah, we we got to get that entourage back. You know I know. I, mean? I know we weren't talking about that, but entourage, <laughs> we'd moved on. Maybe an entourage mobile game. I'd take that. Yeah. Maybe just some some. Oh, was there an entourage video game? Maybe some just some wag on the internet making a entourage like a YouTube video where they put on different wigs and they pretend to be the various characters of entourage. I would take that. Absolutely. You no. Know? That Sarah Cooper lady is out of a job now because she can't do any more impressions. So, That's right, uh, yeah. Maybe she could be the, all the Entourage boys, you know? Is this a, is there an Entourage game? Surely not. There's this digitised Johnny drama. <laughs> oh my God, there really is. <laughs> so like 2006. Wow. Yeah, there's also a picture of Borat. Not modern Borat, I should point out. Oh, wow. 2006. With his modern Borat. ideas. <laughs> do you watch Borat? No, I still haven't watched you it. watch it? Yeah. No, I'll get to it. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Cool. Go. James, here's one, here's one more letter. This is from Sarah. Hello. Hello, James and Mason. My name is Sarah, and I'm a huge fan all the way from California. Uh, I know you usually get you two get emails from others saying how something bad happened while listening to the pod, but I wanted to share to you my good news. As you know, the 2020 election has been a whirlwind and very overwhelming, but I've listening to the pod, older and newer episodes, to stay calm all week. So today I was listening to the week's episode when my mom comes barging into my room shouting, Biden's just been announced as a new president. I know it may be a little political, but honestly, it's the first time I felt like I can finally breathe in a really long time as a woman of colour who's a part of the LGBT community. So thank you both. And Claire, for helping me get through this really stressful time, couldn't have done it without you three. Hope you're all doing well. Be safe. From Sarah. That's great news. And look, we hate to get political, yep. but yeah, I feel similar <laughs> to that. Yeah. yeah. It's just nice. It is nice. Everybody take a week off. Everyone take a week off. Regardless of how you voted or what, again, what, like, you, what you just... I know Biden's not great. Like, I know that. <laughs> I know. But I just, just like, I, I know. Yeah. <laughs> you know Look, just... we got... There's going to be four more years of, of our lives and then, and then the... four more years and then four more years, regardless of what happens. It's so that's terrible all, things let's, forever. Let's, let's, take, let's, let's all take right a now. week. Yeah. I, I'm giving it to everybody in the world. Take, yep. a, take, a, take a week. Just sleep. Hit, That's the, right. hit that snooze button. Extra five minutes in the morning. I also call for unity, Mason. Oh, I call for a merging of ideas, both modern yeah. and. Uh, yeah, this yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Just be nice, as well. Be kind, I guess. Nice. I know it's easy to like either be angry or kind of rub stuff in people's faces. I'm very much about that. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> oh, I am you better spite through and through. Mason knows that about me. That's I'm right. driven by it. <laughs> I am dri- every time I have. I don't even want to do this podcast, but I lost a bet like several years ago, and I have to do it because of spite. James is spite. But yeah, I, I, you know, it's a it's a difficult it's a it's a fucking 
what a time, and I hate it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've got, a, I've got one here from Brock. Um, if we're talking about lies our parents told us, whenever oh, yes. the ice cream, because you, uh, to clarify, you mentioned how your parents told you it was illegal to put a car a light on inside the car. That's right, but the car um, was moving, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so um, because you go to jail. But uh, <laughs> I don't know if they said it was jail. They, they s- probably said punishable by a fine, and I would have been like, that means legal for rich people. <laughs> Down with capitalism, I said. Oh, that's one thing I do. I like, um, I'm like in moving towards zero carbon emissions. I know it could all be flipped around at any point and whatever, but yep. the world, man, I want it to live. I want to live here. Please. Wow, look at this bleeding heart level <laughs> over here. But all right, continue. I want to hear about more. Anyway, they, uh, uh, Brock said, whenever the ice cream truck uh, drove by. Pl- and, and in the speech, he mentioned like the LGBTQI plus community. Yep. It's inclusive. It's good. Course, Inclusiveness yep. is good. That's right. Anyway. Um, People feel seen and respected, and I think that's really important, right? Because everybody's valid in their own way. That's right. Anyway, whenever I see what ice cream truck drove... James, it's, it's, it's not the time for this. It's time for people to tell us what weird lies their parents told us. That's right. So we can go, ooh, bad parenting. Exactly. Whenever an ice cream truck drove by playing songs, uh, my uh, mom told us that it was uh, the music truck. I'll never forgive her. <laughs> the music truck. <laughs> the crummy popsicles I missed out on because of oh, this way. That's that I don't that's maybe not the most common version of that. I've I know a number of people who said who've said that their parents told them that when the ice cream truck went playing music it meant it was out of ice cream. <laughs> Why would they be playing it? Then? I don't know, but I guess the <laughs> The, the ice cream truck is like a silent, sh- deadly shark when it's filled with ice cream. You've got to track it down. But once it's out of ice cream, it, it plays that song to let everyone know. I encourage any small business, but uh, they're always bad. They're terrible. No, they're, how dare you? They are. No, I disagree. If it's out of the tub, they're general. Actually, to be fair, no, actually, I've had one ever. And it was the worst ice cream I've ever had. I've had many, James. It was it was like I was at a thing, whatever. Uh-huh. It might have been a festival or yeah. I don't know. I was outdoors. Uh-huh. And this is like five years but ago. But you were pinging off your head, James. I was not pinging off my head. I was sober as a judge. Okay. But um, I went up and they had... Oh, gel- I've met a few bloody judges, it was like though, gel- so you what? Oh, you're not wrong. Yeah. And there was a list of like gelato flavors. And I'm like, I'll have a lemon. Oh, can I have a lemon gelato? And he goes, it's rainbow. I'm like, Ra- what? And he canned me like, it was like $8. Mm-hmm. And it was a like a horrible, like dry ice cream cone with <laughs> rainbow gelato. Gel- gel- gelati should not be rainbow. Do you know what I mean? They've got distinct, sharp flavors that you don't mix together. Uh-huh. And I didn't finish it, and it was terrible. Wait, so did he give you a little scoop of every flavor? No, it was in the one tub. Oh, that's well. It I've was never, rainbow. I've never heard of that. I think you got yourself a rogue gelato man. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. all rogue, aren't they? I guess. Yeah, yeah. It, a lot of them. A lot of them aren't in the Mister Whippy union. They're like, you oh, know, is that like a patented? Mr. Whippy, I don't know. I think I think ice cream vans existed before that was a real like that was, mm. you know. So they they're all at this point they're all they're just they. I mean, what are you going to do? Track them down? They're mobile. You yeah, know? They're, they're 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 mobile battle stations. They can go wherever they want <laughs> and silent. Yeah, that's right. But traditionally, James, yeah. if you get a gel, what you can at a good gelato van, yeah, 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 you go. I'd like a rainbow gelato, please. And they give you a little scoop of each one, and they put it all together, and it's a bloody artistic yeah, work of. I work. agree. Yeah, this was not this. No, you don't want that. He no. was mad too when I asked him for a flavor. I'm like, <laughs> was that? What are we? I'm sorry. This I guy, guess. yeah, this guy was one day till retirement. <laughs> I think you know he drove that into a river after that. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Or you get the one where they give you the soft serve and they put the chocolate on it. Yeah, the that's cho- fine. Oh, my God, and the sprinkles. I, I, look, I, I love like a food truck, but I, like, I want something. What do think we talked about? You're jazzing them up for the modern era. Okay. You know what I mean? You probably, when you put up the, the flap that people come and stand under it, they hang a little fern from it or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> wow. Just a bit of flavor, a bit wow. of color. Do you know what I mean? I think, I think, no, I don't think you're all. You're I all don't about- want a bit of ambiance in my food truck, Mason. It's not what it's about. You get it. And most of it melts on your hand as you're walking away because the day's too hot. You're like, ah. Oh. But I'm talking for any food truck. Yeah. Getting a breeze. No, all, no a breeze. The, the burger melts over your hand as you're walking away because the day's too hot. It's too, <laughs> it's too hot. hot. It's too yeah. hot. No, I don't know. I think you should. I think you should get more ice creams at more ice cream trucks if if they ever become a thing again. You yeah, know, I won't. Yeah. <laughs> or if you ever find one where the music's not going, because yeah, I mean, you know, right. obviously jackpot. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Means there's still some ice cream left. That's right. All right, uh, what's next, Mason? It's the end of the show. We've done the whole That's show, right. I think. That's the show. Well, yeah, oh, bring us it's not home. like a real quick one, primarily because we recorded a bunch of stuff earlier. No, no, we re-recorded it, remember? Oh, man, this was a long episode. Yeah, I agree. Anyway, thank you everybody so much for listening. I hope everybody's doing all right. I hope everybody's 
Gonna have a nice, have a, have a little sleep in. Just really That's right. luxuriate in it, you know, if you can. If, uh, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, thanks for listening and subscribing, telling a friend, telling yep. a lie to a friend. We definitely appreciate Tell that. Lie to a friend. Uh, leaving a nice review, but leaving a lie in a review. That's fine. You got one of a review, James? Five, five stars. Lies? This yeah. one's from Vanna Wok says, I like this new podcast. For only three episodes in, these guys seem to have already found their stride. It's impressive, really. Appreciate that. Uh, and this one is from Parker Jim Jam says, I shouldn't be listening to other podcasts. Uh, last week, you know, often people write in, they're like, I had a horrible accident. Oh, yeah. And I was yeah, listening yeah. to podcasts. Last week, I decided not to listen to the weekly plan on my drive to work, instead opting for the Joe Rogan experience. Needless to say, this was a huge mistake. As I ran into a mailbox, I've now, now decided that James and Nick keep me out of car accidents and save my life on a daily blade basis. Uh, listen to the pod or else. Yeah. Good advice. Yeah, that is good advice. Listen to it or else. Or else. That's right. I mean, that's, mailbox. I mean, Joe Rogan's a $100 million podcast, so. Yeah. Good thing they've increased the production value. I don't think that's true at all. No, I think he just pocketed most of that money. What a win. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. monetarily. Yeah, and so yeah. it's not like when Alan gets a $100 million deal because you've got to put a show and not pay people and be mean or whatever yeah, yeah, happened on sure. that yeah, yeah, yeah. But like there's like four people that run that podcast. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Are they like, all getting $25 million each? Obviously not, but that's like pure profit. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Oh, like yeah, if no. we got $100 million, we would change nothing. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, what we do is I think what I if with look if we get the hundred million dollars, I reckon we put twenty million. We just put it like in a corner somewhere. Mm. We just stack it up in a corner. If you can find us, you can have it. Yeah, fair. Yeah, that's absolutely fair. That's right. Uh huh. That'll be. But we're going to fight you. Yeah, we'll fight. You, obviously, we'll fight you, yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah, we'll fight yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're going to get us. You're going to get it past us and Claire and the dog and your yep. two kids. Yep. And that weird neighbour that you have. Yeah, you know him. Yeah, that's right. I don't think. I've, for another day, I'll tell that <laughs> story. Right. Yeah, yeah, nice. Uh, oh, what's yeah. next? Look, after that, it's just um, look. If you want to get a hold of us, you can go to Weekly Planet Pod at Facebook, at Gmail, at Twitter, at Bandcamp. You can go to planetbroadcasting dot com. You can look at all the podcasts on the Planet Broadcasting Networks, including the the Andy Donner podcast. That's right, yeah, absolutely. All kinds of other you podcasts. Can, yeah. Um. Uh. You can also uh, go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. Uh, fun civil uh, conversation about all sorts of fun topics. It's a grand old time. I like it. Uh, also, you can sign up to the uh, uh, Planet Broadcasting newsletter from the great Rob Collings. He's at Raw Collings on Twitter. He's at the Weekly Planet on Twitter. You should follow him there. That's I'm right. At Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. I'm Nick Maso, N I C K M A S E A U on Instagram. James, you're Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. All platforms. If you'd like to help out the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. Chuck in a buck. We'd, uh, we'd love that. Any, any change you can spare, any loose change you find in the couch. Or in the on the in the outside world, if you find any on the ground, we'll have it. We'll take it. We'll take your dirty sewer change, your gutter change, <laughs> digitally. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, take that, animals. take the dirty money and take it to your bank and, and send it to <laughs> us digitally. Uh, or you can uh, go to the Amazon affiliate link in our episode description. You want to buy some stuff, your groceries, yeah. get it on Amazon, send it to your house. We get a little something. Or you can sign up to BigSandwich.co, where we've got all sorts of stuff, all That's sorts right. of new stuff coming out every every day. Not every day. Every, every day. Week. Several, several times a, few a times week. A few times a week. A few times a week. But I, put, I try to put most of the, when I can, the new videos up. For example, what, yeah. uh, uh, my newest video, Clumsy Star Wars. <laughs> I don't know anything is, about uh, that. Matt edited for me. It oh, was one goodness. of those things where I had the idea, I'm like, do a supercut of all the, um, all the time somebody like falls over in Star Wars. Nice. And then he made it good. Did you add audio of them going, ow, my butt, every time? <laughs> no, no, it works better without the ow, my butt audio, but it was definitely I'll believe considered. that when I see it, but all Now, right. this video will be up already by the time people are this, but how's that for a thumbnail that I made? Oh, my goodness. Star Wars? That is graphic. That is shit hot, Mason. Yeah, that's good stuff. Thank that's, you. And it shows emotion, which people like in a thumbnail. They like as emotion. I, as it does I it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where was I? God, that's a good thumbnail. Yeah. But anyway, BigSandwich.co, we've got bonus podcasts, we've got movie commentaries, we've got all sorts of videos and, and things, all kinds of stuff. It's, that's right. It's, it's tremendous. Uh, thank you to the Brute and the Basilisk and Rackham for all our musical themes. If you want to buy a T-shirt, go to, go to tpublic.com and search for The Weekly Planet. Don't mind if you do. Buy official one or a bootleg one. We, don't care. we, we don't, don't, don't care. We don't care. But, I mean, one. if you're going to buy The Weekly Planet logo, buy the authentic one. Don't buy the terrible one because there's normally just, oh, somebody, yeah, 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 normally yeah, it's just yeah. somebody and they've like they've like – Cop, they've like saved a thumbnail yeah. from Google Image Search and they've put it on and you get it and it's like four pixels exactly. wide. You know? And maybe you want to go through like the, the Weekly Planet posters um, Instagram feed or Twitter feed because they're making T-shirts that's as well. Right, you know yeah. what I mean? they're, that's they're, exactly right. They're, they're legit. Yeah, what a so, week we've had. What a week. It's fuck, What a fucking week, right? <laughs> it's, yeah. <sighs> wow, man. After we recorded the stuff with Auntie Donna, yeah. I went home. And I was like, I'm gonna. I got some leftover pizza. I'm gonna heat up this pizza. Oh, yeah, what and kind I, of pizza? Did you so it was an Aussie Aussie pizza. So let me just guess. Uh, yeah. So you got your you got your Napoli base, obviously. Yes, you got yes. your ham. You got your cheese. 
You got your pineapple? No. no. Oh, so you got your egg. Yeah, egg. And that's it. No, and bacon. Ham, ham oh, and yeah, bacon. bacon. Didn't yeah. I say that? No. Mm, sorry, apologies. Some sort of pineapple and egg pizza, you monster. I'll do a pineapple egg pizza. Anyway, I, got, I, got the, I put two slices of pizza on a plate mm. and then I opened my fridge and I put it in the fridge and I'm like, what now? Because <laughs> I thought it was the microwave. So that's, that's kind of the kind of week I've been having. It's pretty good, right? <laughs> That's nuts. I'm like, where's the button to heat up the, oh, I put it in the fridge. Put it in the fridge, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not, not going to do that. It's colder than ever. <laughs> How colder. was the pizza, though? Really good. Was it one of those, like, dirty Aussie pizzas? Yes. Not, you know, with, like, the, the crust is, like, crazy yes. thick and, you know what I mean? Not none of this gourmet nonsense. No. Yeah. Anything in between, like, super gourmet and, like, dirty. Old school pizza old, joint that's been yeah. there for 40 years. Anything yeah. in the middle, no thank you. Yeah. I want, like, one of those. That's so, right, yeah. Yeah, all right. Next week, maybe Tenet? Oh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> It'll be a roll of maybe the dice. new mutants. Maybe it'll be a roll of the dice to see if both of us can get into a screening well, of, that's of the a other movie, thing, isn't like, it? You know exactly. Uh, but yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Or, or another topic. That's right. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, grab that, Jimmy. Guys, <laughs> we will see you next week. Thanks for watching. All you pervs are out there. Yeah. To that window. We see you. Yeah. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want, it's up to you.